welcome to the WAN show. We have got a great show for you guys this week. Breaking news. Breaking news. Like what what is this? Like two hours ago, three hours ago, or something like that? Three or four, yeah. Yeah. Uh SVB, oh. the, the Silicon Valley Bank goes under? What what bank? The bank? Just gone? In Silicon Valley? This is wild. Um, less wild is that um, YouTube has apparently relaxed their stupid f***ing profanity policy. I'm still bleeping it anyway. Not 100%. Some people yeah. complained about that yeah. WAN show. What else we got going on today? Ring gives, gives police invasive user footage, including sometimes of inside their house. Cool. Even without a warrant. Just just if they, like, if they feel like they want Good it. Good job, Ring. Yeah. Uh, oh, what else? Uh, really, Luke? Uh... Just because I get to go first and pick all the best topics means that you sit here and have to I don't to see anything of, else I want to talk about. Think about it for this Sounds long. good. Uh, trust me, there will be stuff. <laughs> Seriously? What would you pick? There's something in here that was in here last week, but we've also talked about it like three times, so I don't know. All right, uh, intro! <laughs> The show is brought to you by FreshBooks, Goliath Technologies. I heard they're online. Uh, Squarespace. <laughs> really? Okay, Tarkov. Why not that for the fourth topic? Luke's got oh, some Tarkov yeah. updates. It's I spicy. Yeah. First, yeah, yeah. we need to get into the big news this week. Uh, sources for this. I don't know. Everywhere. CTV, the BBC, Blockworks. Doesn't matter. The point is... Earlier today, the 16th largest bank in America, which, if you were a Canadian, doesn't sound like that, that would be not that big. Big of a deal, <laughs> because here in Canada we only have like four banks. We're also smaller than California in regards to population. Yeah, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a huge deal here in America. 16th largest bank. Uh, what? Okay, so they suffered a good old-fashioned 1930s-style bank run, and the tents of its Wikipedia page yeah. went from is to was. was. There was some indication earlier this week that the bank might not have sufficient liquid assets. Uh, the stock price of its parent company dropped suddenly. Venture capitalists advised their clients to withdraw funds, and those clients rushed to get out what they could until regulators stepped in. This is the largest American bank collapse since the 2008 financial crisis. Now, here's the thing. Under normal circumstances, we wouldn't really be reporting on a bank failure in the U.S. because it's kind of a big deal, but it's not really tech. Yeah. Except that SVB stands for Silicon Valley Bank. So let's, um, <sighs> let's talk about that. The liquidity issues that they suffered were heavily exacerbated by inflation, interest hikes, and the overall weakness of... Here it comes. The tech markets, as SVB specialized in lending to tech startups, and most depositors were tech workers and VC-backed companies. Much of the bank's deposits, and this is wild, were uninsured. Now, this is not in our notes, so you guys will have to forgive me if I've got the exact details wrong, but my understanding is that deposits were insured up to a maximum of $250,000. I believe so. Now, this is something that is, you know, from a, I would say from an individual standpoint, very much a first world problem. Um, but most banks that I'm aware of do, in fact, have a limit to how much your balance can be before it just goes beyond what their insurance will cover. And in the event of a bank run or insolvency or other kind of, hey, poof, the money's gone event, it is simply not covered. It is irrecoverable. So there's so the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or FDIC.gov says that standard deposit insurance amount is 250k per depositor per insured bank for each account ownership category. So 250k is insured by government. So, the companies on company scale, yes, 250k. I was getting to that. Is small. From from an individual Smaller. standpoint, right? 
Lots. Oh, I'm sorry. Your $251,000 is not fully covered in your bank account? Boo hoo hoo. Cry me a river. So, 250 k right? you're a person, whatever. That's tons of money. That's a lot of money to tons have in the bank. Money. But let me tell you something. From a business standpoint, look around you, okay? Right? Do the math. How many people work here? I think we're over a hundred now. We're um, close to it. Does anyone know what like minimum wage is here? In B, we don't pay minimum wage. I know, but like I'm doing In like BC? A, I think yeah. it's like fourteen. Let me look it up. Okay, okay. So we've got a hundred people. Okay. Fifteen sixty-five per hour times. Fi so let's assume that we paid minimum wage, which we don't. Okay, so that would be uh, one thousand five hundred and sixty-five dollars per hour. Uh, what does that work out to in a work week? Let's say everyone was working 40 hours. We have, we have full-time employees. We're just doing this math live here. That would be $62,600 per work week, which is only half of a pay period. So times two. Assuming, assuming that we paid minimum wage, which again, we do we not, don't. That would be $125,000 per pay period. Not including all other expenses. Not including all other expenses. Not including the fact that we, no, in fact, do not pay anyone here minimum wage. Not including the fact that you should have more than one freaking pay period yeah. in your bank account at a time. Yeah. So in the event that our company, say, were to experience an event like this, where right now, Anyone with their deposits in SVB, if they didn't get them out already, and even if they did get them out, if they sent, if they, if they withdrew money via a wire, like they sent out a wire, there is no guarantee now that the bank has, my understanding is it's simply been seized by the federal government or something like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so... Sorry for any little details here, but effectively its assets are under control by a third party now. If that money simply does not come out, it's gone. Um, now, there is some, so, so, right, so if that were to happen here, we would just be out whatever was in that float account. And given, at least temporarily when you have bills to pay and salaries to fulfill. Exactly, like that. because yeah. if you factor in that this is a bank that specializes in stock startups where they are theoretically putting their VC raised money that they are running off of. This is, these, this these is highly operational funds. Yeah, this is wild. This could be, this could be even if even a, a, a profitable company. Okay. We are a profitable company, but if you took our operating capital and just, even if you didn't eliminate it, if you froze it indefinitely, how do we run? Yeah. How do I pay for whatever services you're logged in? Float plane. How do I how do I pay the bill? How do I pay you? How do I how do I pay that guy? <laughs> right? Look how sad he would be if no. he didn't get any money. <laughs> this is this is wild. Um and you know what? It's it's one of those things where it's something that Yvonne and I have actually talked about. In Canada, the banking industry is fairly well regulated, pretty solid. During we 2008, we kind of survived, stuff like that. We were pretty steady up here. Um, but I can tell you guys from my own research that the limit, so we used to bank with a credit union specifically because there was no um, government imposed limit on how much they could insure. That was, that was the reason we did it. So we could have a million dollars or two million dollars or three million dollars sitting in the bank as our as our operating funds or to cover upcoming deposits or expenses for merch or whatever else it is we could have that sitting there knowing that in the event that something went catastrophically wrong it would be covered by insurance and we would get it back but that actually changed i think about a year ago oh. it was in the last year or two i know that for sure um and so i gotta be honest with you you um we ha we are pretty much in the same situation if, oh just but but not with with not so if this happened to the bank that you're with and so reading about this as a business terrifying. owner is absolutely terrifying it's petrifying yeah I, I would i would basically roll into the office and just like i just sit there 
What can I do? How do you run a business with no capital? And now it is possible that uh, uh, that a sale of SVB and its and its assets and its liabilities presumably um, could be negotiated. But I pretty much promise you that whatever those um, what, whatever cash it owes, if you get anything back from it, it's going to be less than a hundred percent. Like they're going to yeah. negotiate some reduced payout and you don't know which part of the queue you're going to be in in regards to people that get their money first so like yeah yeah that well that was a whole thing that happened uh, NCIX. That we saw with the ncix yeah. bankruptcy yeah. where depending on where you were in the chain of creditors yeah even if they extracted any money from the from the shareholders who turned tail and ran away it was never going to make and, it and like the, to you. the lawyers or whatever hold co is currently dealing with the sale and stuff they're going to want their cut too yeah like, yeah they get paid no matter what paid which first. is really interesting to yeah, me yeah yeah so like there's some there's some funky stuff it's it's going to be interesting yeah top gear uh, 1224 says 100 percent honest this is why companies use stocks as bank accounts not just stocks so i was recently made aware of something called a land bank land bank yeah, yeah. uh so here in vancouver where real estate generally does one thing it goes like this though not necessarily the case lately as um some of the folks here who have been who have been on the market can attest to and also i can attest to as someone who bought at the peak uh the lab I, I get reports from our commercial realtor every once in a while prices are going down it's exciting i'm sitting here going yeah that doesn't help my mortgage brah uh, anyway uh where, where was i going right uh the concept of a land bank is that you just buy land because cash like okay this is something that Yvonne and I were talking about recently. The concept of like investments being risky, right? Investments carry an inherent risk. So buying something like the lab, something that an investment that Everything has gone down, carries right? Risk. Um, an yeah, investment yeah. carries risk. And it's like, yes, that's true. But literally every asset class can be seen as an investment on some level. Yeah. Like here, here's something interesting. Did you know that the Canadian dollar has lost five cents to the US dollar in the last three weeks. I know that because I saw it on your screen, but right. Yeah. So the mere act of having cash in the bank not invested is an investment. A good one. Well, with inflation being what it is, I would say no, but it is certainly an investment. So yeah. so this is where the concept of a land bank was introduced to me, where it was kind of like, well, here's the thing. You actually can't trust cash. Gold kind of sucks these days. Uh, what, crypto? I mean, sure, if you like riding the roller coaster, baby. <laughs> um, so that's why a lot of wealthy people just put their assets into land. Because, and this is, this is the way uh, the person explaining it to me uh, <laughs> explained it. They were like, well, here's the thing about land. They're not making more of it. I mean... Dubai would have something to say about that, I suppose, but <laughs> in, ge in general. Most places are. Yeah, in general, they're not making more of it, right? And so I, um, uh, this, the, the, coming back to sort of the reason for having this conversation, we're already looking around the lab going, holy crap, we're going to run a space in this place. And I had wanted to explore the idea of, I don't know, renting the unit next door or in the long term, you know, because my understanding is there's a long term tenant there now. So I'm kind of sitting here going, OK, maybe if we could scrape together a down payment between now and when that lease expires, maybe we could acquire that. And I was informed that the owner is using it as a land bank and is therefore utterly uninterested in selling it because they aren't looking to profit. They're looking for a safe haven for their money. Yeah. And based on this SVB news. That's not crazy. Yeah. That's just that's just sound financial planning apparently when you just like have 10 million dollars that you don't want to just disappear because there was a bank run. Um anywho, sorry. I I went off on a bit of a tangent this, there, but this, this this is mind blowing. This also is going to be quite the developing story over the last little while. I I just googled companies with cash stuck in SVB. Because we've had a bunch of people mention 
Roku, right? So we haven't said it on, on this part of the show yet, but Roku has 26% of its cash stuck in SVB, which as far as my understanding wow. goes right now is $487 million. I don't know what's more surprising, the fact that <laughs> they have $487 million stuck in SVB or the fact that they have almost $2 billion in cash. Yeah, Roku, like really? Yeah, crazy. Go um, figure. Roku be balling. They're doing good, like, apparently. in cash. Yeah. Dang. How many people does even work at Roku? Whoa, we'll see moving forward. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to joke about that, but... Googling this, uh, the top stories thing on Google, uh, there's a post from two hours ago, there's a post from one hour ago, and there's a post from 10 minutes ago. This is very, very much a currently developing story. There is some cool stuff. There's some yeah. white knights already showing up, even okay. though it's been like literally hours, um, like Vercel, Linear, some other companies. I know this because I'm just creeping Theo T3's Twitter. Um, but these companies are stepping up and saying like, if you are a customer of ours and you're impacted by this, like reach out, we might be able to help you. I don't know who you're calling. Um, there's, there's even like, some of them are talking about, okay, we can, we can suspend like we or delay payments while you figure out your accounting like so, some companies are, are being very cool about it um but yeah this is gonna be this is gonna be quite yikes for a while i don't know what i want to get into cause hey I don't know. uh your money is not in svb is it oh i think i know who this is uh svb uh silicon valley bank it's linus no no i just mean like like you, you like you guys don't keep your money there right silicon valley bank Okay, just checking. You're with Chase. Cool. Oh, yeah, SVB experienced a bank run. They're, like, gone, essentially. Yeah, I guess you haven't been on the internet in the last few hours. Anyway, I'm live on WAN Show. I gotta go. Uh, all right, later. Okay, bye. Cool. Is this that um, this company is the, you invested This is in? the NAS. Um, yeah, I thought so. This is the NAS <laughs> software company that I literally wrote a check to, about, like, a month ago. What about Framework? Um, I don't know. And if I did know, I wouldn't be able to say anything. But this is the one that I was most worried about because these guys are very much in like stealth mode right yeah, now. Yeah, they have yeah. absolute like framework has cash flow. Yeah. They're selling laptops. That helps a lot. That <laughs> you can refill the coffers. That helps a lot. Yeah. See, okay, actually, you know what? It occurs to me that Linus Media Group would probably be okay you can because we could borrow from Creator Warehouse, uh -huh. where we have consistent cash coming in linus media group i mean think about it many of our customers are probably impacted yep so oh crap yeah that's not good oh i gotta talk to accounting <laughs> oh balls anyway the point is <laughs> creator warehouse oh, <laughs> sorry that was that was quite the thing to witness <laughs> does any other company need a wan show producer i mean producer Oh, Dan, how man. dare you apply for another job <laughs> yeah, you get, live you know, on this show? <laughs> He's not very professional. I'm not giving him a good reference. Yeah, uh, just make sure you send me the link to your job posting so that I can find out how to apply. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, that's a good reference, by the way. Um, um, any... <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, we would be okay because we have money coming in regularly. Backpacks. Yeah, not in in not in like Screw large. Yours. Yeah, not in large chunks from from like corporate partners, but it piecemeal from individual customers. That would mean that Creator Warehouse could lend us money to operate, and we would probably stay. Um, we'd probably be fine. So, so that was my point: was that if you have regular income probably you can ride this out a lot more easily but if like this nas software that we i mean i have no idea if i'm going to get anything back from this they just they're creating a product that i really want to exist it's like a simpler user-friendly and yet still powerful nas solution for diy and enthusiasts um, and they are completely in like like noses pressed against the screens well, getting clearly. it going mode clearly yeah clearly yeah because it's like 
I don't know, seven o'clock where where he is right now. And and he, he hasn't received like the biggest tech news in startups in a long time. Yeah. So he's clearly focused. I have a question for you. That's good. That's you. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question for you. Oh. As, <laughs> the amount of pain. <laughs> Um, if you are, so you've invested in, in that company, you've invested in framework. Yes. I wouldn't really call you an investor because you invest right now in things that you just like want to exist. I would describe myself as like an activist investor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not I, I went in, in both cases. Oh, how do I say this without it coming across the wrong way? Not expecting a return. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I went in in both. If, if there's a return, I'm gonna be like, Cool. But like we talked about last week, the reality of it is if I really wanted more money, my biggest investment is Linus Media Group Inc., Creator Warehouse Inc., and Floatplane Inc. If I wanted to have like truly f you money, that would be the way to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of danced around it last week, but it was it was a nine figure offer, okay, you, for the for the whole okay. shebang. I guess you technically some danced people misunderstood, it. which Whoa. is remarkable. All right. <laughs> anyway, the point is it was a nine figure offer. If I wanted money, I could get money. The reason, the biggest reason I didn't take the money is that at the end of the day, I don't have as I, I don't aspire to a yacht, yeah, a yacht lifestyle. You'd be so bored. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you would actually hate that trip. I think it, I guarantee I've, I've received photos from him when he's on vacation, like standing on the beach with like the I am so bored here face. He, he's not going to be entertained by a yacht. Uh, I wouldn't sorry. even bother renting a yacht. I don't even need to know. This is, even if it was free, he'd probably I, be like, I'd rather not. I already know I don't need it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the point is that a big part of the reason that I didn't take it is that my my life would not be material cha materially changed mm -hmm. by having a giant dragon horde, which is obviously a super privileged position, but it also means that I get to just do stuff like this. Yeah. So I get to just say, hey, that's something I really want to exist. I know you guys are super cool, and even if I never get anything out of it, this is great. I will be the most hands-off investor that you have ever had. Um, like, it's it's really funny because even internally, people will want to know, like, what's going on with framework and know. stuff because it's, like, interesting <laughs> technology. And I'm like... Stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, here's I, read, the, I read about it in the tech news, same as you. <laughs> here's the actual question, though. Yes. Okay. If that wasn't your method of investing... Yeah. If you were investing for profit... Yeah. I mean, and to be clear, I don't mind profit. Yeah, yeah. Like, but if this, was, if this was what you did, if you were a oh, VC... Oh, like, I'm an investor. Yes. Like, that's what I do. Yeah. Sure. So okay. I'm just, I'm putting you in this position. If this happened to one of the companies that you invested in, and they're screwed... Do you put in more? Yeah. I mean, it depends if I even have it. What if I bank let's, it? Let's fucking... Oh, sorry, I missed the beat, but what if I bank there? Let's assume in this situation that you have the cash. Okay, I bank at Bank of America. That's the only because, bank in, in America I because, can think of. I, I bank at HSBC. I, I don't know. Sure, yeah. Sure, whatever. Because in this situation, you, like, <laughs> sorry, re, I'm a little flustered right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> reinvesting, let's say you reinvest the same amount. Reinvesting means you just doubled the investment. Yeah. So you're not getting your return yeah right? you haven't and like I, I i would imagine the paperwork of putting that investment into it means you've you've probably increased their their valuation or whatever like i don't think you can just be say oh i will i need to replace the like money that disappeared because so it gets because you already have the shares that presumably you were issued based on that initial investment. The fact that they like pissed it away in a you know bank or whether they whether they pissed it away it or really lost them? it, yeah. yeah, or lost it or whatever. Like the 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 vehicle by which they lost the money because they bought I don't know uh, the three hundred Herman Miller chairs or whatever. Like it doesn't <laughs> matter how they lost it. Yeah. It's gone. That doesn't mean well, you didn't no, get your shares. You've got your shares. So no, if you okay, give yeah. them more money, well, I think. They, they would have to they would it would have to dilute they would have to issue more shares or you would have to find some justification for the valuation to be higher or something like or some combination of the two right like you you can't have something for nothing <sighs> so, so it would be fucked yeah 
Because I'm wonder I'm wondering what's going to happen to certain companies right now. Yeah. Yeah. And like, there's this brutal cycle that we just went through, right? All of, and there's been a bunch of news articles about this. Earlier this week, literally, I was reading one of them. There's been this cycle that has happened where a bunch of very good tech employees were laid off recently, right? Yeah. And a lot of the, these, like, hard-hitter, big-time tech employees spun up startups in the <sighs> last, like, like month. month or two. And a lot of these startups are, like, looking really good, actually. But if they're banking here, they might have just lost all of their VC money that they just raised like that. So people are talking low interest loans is something you could do. I can tell I can tell you from researching it, you can't just issue like a 1% interest loan. Uh, even if you're just super dupey, definitely best friends. Um, the government's going to be like, hold on a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this looks like a gift. Oh, man, there's people on Reddit, apparently, this is in Floatplane chat, people on Reddit posting about how their payroll companies went through SVB, so they weren't getting paychecks. Oh. Like, the fact that this is the bank of, of the cradle of, you know, modern internet technology, it means that there's... We can't even predict all the things that are going to go wrong because, because of this. Because one of the weird things is, like I said, I googled companies with cash stuck in svb right and the main thing that shows up is roku i suspect over the next few days week month we're going to hear about a lot more companies that had their their stuff stuck right wow okay so it sounds like the assets of svb were specifically seized by the fdic by the way okay so government's got it okay well um, good luck, everybody. Oh, do not really, like... Really, really, really brutal. Yeah. The but... ramifications of this, not not only is like the main news cycle going to take quite a while to actually pick up the impact of this, but the ramifications of this are going to go on for an extremely long time. Silicon yeah. Valley Bank's been around for a while, and they've been a big deal in startups for a while. This is going to be a massive, massive change in how people do business. Because it's been like a default for a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, you got VC money? Time to go to Silicon Valley Bank. This is what you do. Got people saying the government is the reason for this. It is not that simple. Um, like a bank run doesn't just happen because the government... Um, I don't know. I don't know a lot of those types. Yeah, of there's a lot of stuff. Like, I don't know how much of this is true, but Floatplane Chat is just exploding right now with yeah. apparently insiders at SVB selling shares in the weeks leading up to this. I mean, obviously they wouldn't they wouldn't figure this out at the last second that they didn't have cash reserves to cover their withdrawals, right? So, man, apparently Roblox has money in SVB. I don't even feel bad for them though. No, oh, offense. they're they're rolling in it. I'm sure they'll be fine. Yeah, I think they'll figure it out. Wow. All right. Okay. Well, um, neat. Uh, good luck, everybody. What do you want to talk about next, Mr. Luke? Um, 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 should we talk about that? I think that's funny. The pouch? Uh, sure. <laughs> Last week, we announced this. It's a pouch that holds technology, <laughs> but we were informed that... That name that we announced for it is, in fact, trademarked. How anyone managed to trademark a descriptive name um, is baffling to me because when we went through the process of trademarking the name of our uh, joystick covers, which um, will go on sale at some point, <laughs> they're, little, they're little silicone covers that is go that on your joysticks that was in the bag for travel. Time? Uh, oh, were they? Uh, no, different one. Okay, okay. No, they're they're not for grip when you're gaming. They're for travel. Oh, so they're like protection, so you don't get uh, drift and stuff. We hope. Yeah. We don't we don't guarantee anything. No. So we're that not. That would be a bad idea. We're not making any claims about anything, but they go over your joysticks and they lock them in place uh, when it's sitting in a bag cool. or in storage or. Tight end. Oh no. <laughs> when you're traveling or whatever else. Um, <laughs> So anyway, when we were going through the trademark process for that, we wanted to call them stick locks and we wanted to trademark that. And we were basically told, yeah, you, you can't really trademark a name that is simply descriptive of the function of the product. 
So how anyone managed to trademark Tech Pouch is sort of baffling to me. Um, it's, it's cool to me that the owner of the Tech Pouch trademark apparently considers us an important enough rival hey. to, to bother to send a cease Let's and go. desist to. Yeah. But anywho... We need a new name. The point is, we need a new name. And we need a new name so that we can relaunch the page. Because yeah. if you notice, it was taken off the site. Yeah, so it holds tech. I mean, it can hold anything. We have a couple of ideas. Uh, do you sandwiches? Want, do you want to, I mean, I wouldn't recommend putting a sandwich in it. It could, it's, though. Yeah, but these are fabric materials. They're fairly absorbent. Oh. If your sandwich gets a little leaky, get, like, some mayo in there. I don't know if it would be that, great. That would be not great. Yeah, you don't need, like, sandwich mayo and this thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, the point is that... <laughs> We've got a couple oh, of names. Poll, yeah, right? do you want to create a poll? Yeah, yeah. Uh, idea number one. Uh, where does this? Uh, where does this go? Uh, yes, idea number one: gamer pouch. Once again, I think that would be pretty difficult to uh, pretty difficult to trademark, so yeah. it shouldn't shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but my my problem with that is it sounds an awful lot like, um, you know. Ah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> gamer. Pouch. Okay. Other idea: mini tech sack. <laughs> <laughs> that has its own that has its own innuendo problems um uh tyna said tech bag of holding we also call the um the big area in the backpack yeah we call that like the compartment of holding so yeah. i don't know um bag of tech yeah that that's pretty funny uh linus's tech sack <laughs> Okay, I appreciate the suggestions, float plane chat. I don't know that we're going to go with any of those. Gadget bag, nerd bag, yeah. the pouch, <laughs> tech tips pouch. Yeah, you also don't, yeah, like we, you could take the mini off. It could just be tech sack. Yeah, it could be tech sack. You that's, want to throw tech sack in there? I said tech sack in there. How about tech tips mini. pouch? Tech tips pouch? Yeah. It's not tips, tech pouch, it's tech, tech, tips, tips pouch. tech tips pouch. All right. Um, <laughs> LOM says tech sack is fine. I kind of like tech sack. Yeah, tech sack's not bad. Thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, we could call it LTT pouch. Yeah, yeah, that's actually not bad. I throw LTT pouch in there. LTT pouch? Got you it. should probably. I feel like we're going to have to do like a read, like we pick the highest two and then mm -hmm. re vote. You should throw pouchy mick pouch face in there just. Sure. To make sure that we're we've got the the internet culture Would we represented. Would actually launch that? I will do. I will commit to whatever the audience oh, ultimately votes for. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually feel Nick's cringe from here. <laughs> the energy is strong. At least temporarily. At least temporarily. We Jane, will. Jane said NCIX pouch. I think we actually couldn't do that. No, we couldn't do that. That yeah. it would definitely be an actual trademark issue. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's let's go with let's go with what All we've right, got. Let's is, launch the poll. That is six options. Okay. Hit it. All right. I, oh man, I need to see. Who immediately see takes results. off? Pouchy McPouch face with almost a hundred percent of the vote. <laughs> Why did you agree to that? Okay, more serious votes are st starting to come in. Pouchy McPouchface held 90% for like 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and, and Tech has Sack now looks fallen. like it's going to come away with it. We'll do a, we'll yeah. we will do a playoff between the top two and we'll see how okay, good. see how it comes out. Tech Sack is is cruising. Yeah, Tech Sack is making up a lot of ground here. Uh why don't we why don't we change gears a little yeah. bit here and oh man, we Paul Look, we've got so much stuff to talk about this week. We've got a secret shopper update. Dell. Yeah, but we don't normally do our own stuff in the first four announcements. No, this is Dell. Dell reached out to me out of oh. nowhere being like, hey, we have no idea if you have a secret shopper planned or anything like that, but we're ready. So I, I figured we'd talk about that. But first, why don't we do an update right. on the whole all Tarkov right. situation? Right. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, chat's asking about, like, apparent. sorry, what happened to GOAT? Like, it okay, got root so kitted or something? What? Like, his system's down? People been arrested in China? Not What is happening? Literally not one time that we've talked about GOAT or his videos on Wancho have I expected we were going to talk about GOAT or his videos on Wancho. So I am yet again apologizing to GOAT. Uh, cause I wasn't prepared for this, but he has released his third video on the topic now. It started with the wiggle that killed Tarkov, which is currently sitting at 2.2 million views. By the wow. Way. Um, but, uh, his most recent video is I was attacked. 
um, and he talks about some of what happened in the aftermath. One of the things that he points out is that he was told by a number of people, including me, that he should have wiped his drive after all that happened, and he did not. <laughs> and one of the things that he tried to do... Why don't you do, explain why? Well, he people. installed he installed their software on his local system, the, right? We, we got to get people up to speed. Hold okay, on. okay, okay. So what happened was uh, Goat, or also known as Goat Moth, a creator in the Tarkov space, Escape from Tarkov, a video game that uh, I and a number of other people play. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, are we good? Okay. okay. Uh, he, he made a video called The Wiggle That Killed Tarkov, which was an investigative journalism piece. Really good. On, it was fantastic. On cheating in Tarkov and the how it's evasiveness and how much worse it is than most people realize yep. because of the type of cheats that people use. Yep. A lot of people when they're thinking about cheating in first person shooter games, the main thing they think about is aim. Yeah. Yep. Another and thing that people hacks. think about is wall hacks, stuff yep. like that. But usually you think about the obvious forms of cheating. Yes. And tar in Tarkov, it's not necessarily the obvious forms that are the most pervasive. It's the things that aren't very obvious unless you are also cheating. So he had to cheat in order to reveal this issue. Um, he then followed up talking about how his account that he cheated on did get banned, but he knew that was coming. He didn't hide like his raid IDs or anything, for, yep. so it was very easy for them to detect. Um, and lots of things have happened in the aftermath. We covered some of this, I believe, in last show. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, even more after the happened. video, you advised him to completely wipe his drive, fresh install, and the reason for that was because in order to expose the cheaters. Goat installed the same cheat software that they were using, which, I mean, I don't want to generalize, but if I was going to generalize, I would say that if you're a developer of cheating software for video games, you're probably not the most... Um, it's very likely savory if you download cheats for a game character? that you are also downloading things that you probably don't want on your system. Whether that is... And it's probably, well, I'm saying if you develop cheats for games, you are oh, probably... Yeah. You are probably selling software. Your, your morals might be a little questionable. That people shouldn't have on their system. Yeah. So it's, it's quite common to uh, have, uh, like, Bitcoin miners or not necessarily Bitcoin, but coin miners installed on your system that are yeah. going to run in the background that you don't know about. Stuff uh, like that. It's also very possible that, like in this particular situation, they install a rootkit on your system that they can like do basically whatever they want with. Um, and he went to try to get some... some. In his original video, he talked about how he didn't want to interview the, the cheat developers. Mm -hmm. For this video... He has interviews with some anti-cheat developers, and okay. he wanted some voice clips from cheat developers. And he thought, you should watch the video. Don't get everything from the Wayne Show. Um, For it, real. Yeah. It's actually <laughs> like, I'm not going to, it's a 16-minute video, and No, it's I packed. just mean in general. Yeah. Also that. <laughs> uh, um, but he, he wanted like a, a, a voice clip from the people that developed the cheat that he used in particular, because he brought up, it, it had gone undetected for three years. So he wants to hear them like being really cocky about it, basically. Sure. He reconnected to their Discord. They now have some form of verification, and they figured out that it was a new user from the same. I don't know if I don't. I don't remember all the details. You should watch the video. But they yeah. figured out that it was him essentially. Yeah. And then just like nuked his drives. Wow. Couldn't boot anymore. Couldn't even find the drives when like looking through BIOS or anything. He thinks they killed like the drivers on his NVMe drives. Killed the drivers. What's I don't that know even necessarily. Mean? Yeah, I I haven't looked into it enough. I I I there's a few ways that that could happen. Sure. Without having access to stuff, I have I have no idea. I'm not good enough to to make enough assumptions to know. Wild. Um, the controller. Yeah. I, if they're NVMe drives, they're like. It's not a hard drive. So you can fry those in a variety of ways, right? to be honest. Um, in hard drives, there's other bad ways you can do it. And I have since told him, like, yeah, it could also be in your BIOS at yep. this point. Yeah, so that's a whole thing that also came out this week, that there's... Ah, um, oh crap, I forget the details. But basically, there's there's the first uh, instance of... of it's, it's been theorized firmware, for yeah, a while, be, yeah, yeah. but there's the first instance of like a firmware-based 
uh, malware that can uh, survive a complete system reformat because it can fool the all the like trusted um, trusted boot job. Oh man, yeah, secure boot. It yeah. can fool secure boot and like all the uh, the trust elements in that chain that. Um, that protect the pre-operating system loading, actually even pre-UEFI loading environment. So that's a whole, that's a whole thing, man. Like seriously, malware that can survive a complete system format and then just go and reinstall itself. I now, mean, we've had stuff that can hide in BIOS for a while. The, that in, thing that you're talking about is is different. This is pre-BIOS though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is like bad. Oh yeah, that's super bad. That's even worse. Yeah. Um, anywho, the, in order to install something like that, they would need admin authorization on your computer. But the thing is, when you run an executable, yeah, guess what that is? Yeah. So, so that was that was kind of rough. But I mean, Ghost's doing okay. He got he got a he got a two point two million view video. He's, he's probably he's probably doing all right right now. Yeah. And he can probably replace Buy some, a new NVMe replace drive. some drives. Yeah. So he pitched those drives. Hopefully, that's the extent of what needs to happen there. But there's also some other crazy news that happened that he reported on in that video. And you should watch it because he has some interviews with uh, the devs of a game that I don't remember off the top of my head right now. We don't have notes for this because I didn't know we were going to talk about it today. And the interviews are very interesting and they talk about how they have totally, their game was like overrun with cheaters. And they talked about what they did in order to fix it. And now there's like public community posts by users like players of the game talking about like yeah it's a completely different world i don't run into any anymore wow that's cool and their whole approach makes a ton of sense and we've talked about it on wan show where they just have a bunch of systems in place and they, they he, he talks about it but they call it like the the swiss cheese approach or something because like each system is going to have some holes but you just have enough of them that eventually you're, you're not going to be able Nothing to make it all, the way, all the way through yeah right. and maybe some can but like they've gotten it to a point where it's so low I that mean, we've talked before about, about how there are cheats that are literally a robot arm yes. playing the game that You're no anti-cheat can detect, stop it. but that's not fun. Yes. Yeah. A very few people are going to set up a 3D printer to move the mouse around for them to play the game. Like, that's not... You just get to observe. Maybe some RMTers will and stuff, but, like, you're really yes. massively reducing the impact. Yes. Um, but, like... Yeah, so most you should, cheaters you should wanna, watch it. those interviews. Most are really cheaters cool. want to press the button and feel like a Chad because they, yeah. you know, I'm sick of this game or whatever, right? Yeah. So I, I feel like for for most cheaters, uh, that's not going to be that appealing. Yeah, yeah. So and that's all super interesting. But one of the things that he talks about in the video, and again, I don't have notes, so I'm hoping I'm going to remember this well. But that cheat that he used. There's, there's stuff on their Discord. Oh, man, I wish I could bring this up right now. There's stuff on their Discord talking about how the, the service is offline and no mm -hmm. one can use it right now because it has to call to a service all the time and their servers are like gone. And there's people reporting that uh, we don't know who necessarily, but some amount of arrests were made. Arrests? Arrests. Like people were put in jail and their servers were seized. This is a cheat developer based in China. Now, we have no idea who did this. We don't know if it was BSG. We don't know if the investigation was already running from someone else. I know no that idea. I know that developing game cheats is illegal in, I think, South Korea. I think also using them is illegal in South Korea. But I, I wasn't aware of any legislation like that in China. Me neither. I do know that there is a culture of Chinese players cheating outside of China. So I do wonder if maybe there is something and that's why they go to like North American or European servers is because they might get caught if they go on local servers. I have no I idea. I have no clue. Just a random theory. Um, wow. So very mm, interesting. Like the Massive last story we were talking about, this is very much a developing story right yeah. now. And I cannot believe, I mean... The level of impact. Uh, when we first talked about this, I went, wow, that's really cool. F*** that game, right? Uh, like, like I love this kind of expose, investigative journalism Yeah, and he's done a great content. job, yeah. Yeah, like, like, you know, good job, kudos, and all of that, right? I didn't expect the explosion on their community last week. 
I didn't expect the that we're we're going to be looking at people getting literally arrested over the development yeah, of this, yeah. of this cheating software. Dude, when I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to like quit for a while because the situation is so bad. I didn't expect things would happen. I still haven't played yet, but like I didn't expect things would happen this fast that are like, oh, the like main cheat in the whole game just got deleted from the internet. Like that's, that's a pretty big deal. Oh, BBC.com. Police bust world's biggest video game cheat operation. Several luxury sports cars were among assets seized. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, this is awesome. Were among assets seized in the raid. Nice cars. Uh, Chinese police and gaming giant Tencent. Has they, led probably, to the they probably go faster than like all the other cars on the track because they're like, they like cheat. Sorry. Because they what? They cheated? Oh my God. <laughs> Seventy-six million dollars in revenue. They stole. They seized assets. Seventy-six million, million in rev. How many Whoa. people are buying this stuff? Subscription prices for users began at about a ten dollars a day. I don't know. Hundred percent. know if this is the. Hold same. on. Is this the same one? When is I this don't from? Know. I don't know. This is from March thirtieth. Of oh 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 two years ago. Never mind. This is old. This is yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because well, okay. It said, oh, like, I think they posted this to show that yes. It, 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 it is, is very thing. much a thing. It is a thing. Okay, yeah. Fair okay. Enough. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you for that. Wow. Uh, there's a bunch of people posting in Flowplane chat. Wanny pack. <laughs> Andrew Tate was running a cheating operation. <laughs> Got him. Um, it's not a fanny pack, though. Yeah, it's not a fanny pack. If we were to ever do a fanny pack, I give you my personal Linus Tech Tips guarantee. We will call it the Wanny Pack. I promise. <laughs> as long as it has like a WAN, a WAN. It would have to be themed, WAN. Themed, yeah, color yeah. scheme. But yes, 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 we will do it. We'll do it. Okay, we should remake the poll. It's Tech Sack versus Pouchy McPouch Face. Okay. Guys, come on. Um, oh, actually, Linus Tech Tote had a lot of people asking for it as well. Should we just do another round and then do one more after? I think so it's got to come down to we'll, two. Yeah, we'll put these two more options in. So yeah. let, let's put in the, the two new options. So Linus Tech Tote and, uh, or no, that's the only one. And then Tech Sack and Pouchy McPouch Face. Um, okay, yeah. Tote is just T-O-T-E, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, the LTT bag. <laughs> that's pretty funny, actually. Throw in the LTT bag. Okay. So just LTT bag. But it's funny if you say it out loud because testicles. I didn't get it actually until you said it's funny if you say it out loud, and then I got it. I don't know why. But <laughs> <laughs> because testicles. <Jeez. laughs> oh no. Um, all right. Why don't we? Why don't we change gears? And oh my! Is there any good news this week? Um, ring. Is giving police invasive user footage. I mean, we're not just talking like, you know, porch pirates need a reckoning and you got to like catch these guys. We're talking last year, um, Ring announced that at the end of this month, it will require new and existing users to buy a subscription for basic security features that used to be included with the purchase of the camera, including using the Ring app to arm and disarm security, receiving notifications when an alarm triggers, or customizing the camera to record during an alarm. It was allowing police access to users' cameras without a warrant or the owner's consent because the police claimed it was an emergency. Ring has also been repeatedly criticized for providing users footage to police, even when it has no legal obligation to do so. Ring claims that they carefully review all requests from law enforcement and ask for revising warrants when the demands are inappropriate or overly broad. But last year, Michael Larkin, a Ring user in Ohio with 21 cameras around his home and business, was asked by police to provide footage from his outside facing cameras to aid in an ongoing investigation into a neighbor. He voluntarily gave them the footage from the time period they requested. The police then asked for all the footage from the day in question, which he declined. The cameras record in short bursts whenever there's movement, and it would have taken a long time to download and send each file. The police then sent a warrant to Ring, requesting all of the footage from all of his cameras, which Ring gave them, including footage from the three cameras inside his house and the 13 cameras at his business, which is like at a completely separate location. One of the cameras inside the home is located in his bedroom. Okay. 
What the f Am I the crazy person here? There's a, there's a discussion question that said, should consumers ever trust a large company have access to their footage at this point? No. Close circuit, man. Larkin only found out about this when Ring sent him a notification that police had been given his footage. They didn't request or otherwise push back on, on the warrant or anything like that. They're just like, yep, here's footage from this guy's bedroom. Hopefully you like watching videos of him banging. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. No, it absolutely is. I don't know. We've talked about this concept for a long time. We've warned people about like doorbell stuff, like ring doorbells for a long time. This is why. Yeah, we 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 did a couple sponsor spots with Ring way back in the day. I think that was like pre-Amazon acquisition. Oh, and yeah. Uh, I forget when it happened, but there was there was like a fairly early incident where they were just handing over footage and we basically said, look, you guys need to change this policy or we're not going to work with you anymore. Well, yep. we don't work with Ring anymore. Yep, there are solutions for this. Uh, they're not quite as easy and they're not quite as cheap. Yeah. Um, but there are solutions for this for doing it yourself. Um, and unfortunately, that's the, the way it's got to be. In my opinion, especially if you have the cameras inside your house, man, like in the bedroom, I, yeah. I do have. To, okay. I was about to be all judgy and say, well, why would you have a camera in your bedroom in the first place? That's stupid or something like that. But I mean, okay. I don't know. Maybe they have pets and maybe their pets like to hang out in the bedroom and they, you know, like to keep an eye on them for whatever reason, like they could have health problems or you don't know, right? You never know what someone's situation is. Yeah. Maybe there's a very good reason that they have. Conrad. What the heck, man? <laughs> I personally use Eufy cameras in my bathroom. This is one of our developers. Surely you must know better. He's, I mean, he's kidding. He's, he's 100% kidding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, it's time for our last poll. Uh, we, we, we do need this name. Uh -huh. We need to get this thing relaunched on the store. Uh, the results... Okay, is the, it our the, the, okay, so is it our last poll? Yeah, this is because, our last one. Because... Oh, what now? The tote at 16% of the vote could individually decide any of the three remaining. So should we do one more with the three? No, just two. Just We're going two. down to the top. Oh, I see. Yeah, because there's a 1% difference bag. and 16% of the votes are on tote. <sighs> So it will like actually completely change which one ends up in the finals. Okay, Linus Tech Tote is out. New poll, it's Tech Sack at 26% of the vote versus LTT Bag oh. at 24% versus Pouchy McPouch Face at Here, 35. And are we picking just the winner of that or are we doing another final round? Because here's a question. We could leave out, Pouch is clearly going to be in the final. So we could do a poll just against Tech Sack and LTT Bag. No, no, let's 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 put let's let's leave Pouchy McPouch face in. Okay. Yeah, I I can just uh, uh, yeah, yeah, let's let's leave the three options in. We'll is leave this, the three is options this the in. final poll? Let's make this the final countdown. Okay. Do, 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 do. So cuz there's do, 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 there's the concern here because the <laughs> the non pouches are split. I see. Okay. I think if you end it Fine. with multiple non-pouch options, it guarantees a pouch win. Fine, Luke. We will do the three-way vote, and then we will do a two-way final. Okay. It's going to last the whole show, which is really impressive, because WAN shows like <laughs> four hours now. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Why, are, why is WAN show four hours? We've got to fix this. Okay, that's it. WAN show's done. Bye. No, I'm kidding. Nope. I'm kidding. I'm not done. There's so much more to talk about this week. Yep. How were you not able to find topics to... Oh, oh, this is great. Okay. I guess we're going to talk about more LTT store stuff because this is super exciting. That's why I couldn't find topics. What we've been talking about other than Ring, which I didn't want to talk about because I hate that. I mean, it's fair to talk about it on the show, but I just, I just, ugh, we've been saying for so many years not to do it because of this reason that just happened. So it's just like... <sighs> It's good to talk about. It's just frustrating. Um, um, actually, you know what? Let's get the sponsors out of the way, and then we will, and then we will oh, get cool. to the next thing. I'm actually All right. very excited for the sponsors. The You're yeah. excited for the sponsors. I am. Since when are you excited for sponsors, Mister Privateer? Because there's a Dennis integration. Oh no. Wait, what is it's this? It's all Dennis integrations? What is this, Dan? <laughs> Let's go. Dan's got a whole bunch. He's got paperwork over there. It's, yeah, it's 
So the thing that we're using for Wancho now, the new software that we're using for Wancho, stores all of the the um, the sources mm -hmm. in like VRAM. I see. So it's like really quick and stable and stuff. Uh huh. It like filled the card with stuff that Dennis made for this for these ad spots. The VRAM is like oh, it's like seven gigs of of seven gigs of VRAM. I have uh, seventy eight sources. Uh, anyway. Do you want to do your sponsor reads? I've been practicing all day. <laughs> They're worth it. <laughs> okay. Today's show is brought to you by FreshBooks. If your math is as bad as mine, you will need FreshBooks. Linus, I know you're not that good with math. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, FreshBooks is an easy-to-use accounting software that makes it simple to send invoices and collect your cash. FreshBooks was created specifically for business owners and accounting professionals, so it hits that sweet spot between usable and useful. Plus, it keeps your income and expenses organized, which is super helpful during the tax season. It has everything you need to manage your books, like invoicing, expense and time tracking, automated payments, and reports to tell you how healthy your business is. If you bank with SVB, uh, not very. Uh, go to freshbooks.com slash when to save 90% on your first four months. Wow, that was very choreographed. So, sorry. So, so you are over there like manually teeing up this camera and like all these different effects yep. and stuff. You got a whole script and everything. Okay, yep. Yep. hold on a second. How many hours today did we did we dedicate to these WAN show sponsor spots? Mm, 30 minutes. Oh, okay. You said you spent all day practicing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it only took 30 minutes. To... No, I'm hyperbole. <laughs> okay. The show is also brought to you by Goliath Technologies. Uh, Goliath is a best-in-class end-user experience monitoring and troubleshooting software. It allows you to find the root cause of any IT issue in three clicks or less. Wow, that is a bold claim. Uh, with Goliath, you can solve even the most complex Citrix or VMware Horizon user interface issues in minutes, and you get a troubleshooting expert out of the box, so even a level one service desk can resolve issues without escalating them further. The technology comes with embedded intelligence and automation, so you can be set up and operating in minutes, and all the policies are designed by experts and tell you what to monitor for and how to interpret the data. So if you have Citrix or VMware Horizon and are having performance issues, Goliath can help you. And if you're in healthcare, Goliath comes with industry-only modules for Cerner, Epic, and Meditech. Sign up for a free trial and save 20% using the link in the video description. Man, that is like very fancy. All these like animations and stuff and everything. Although that LTT logo just like hanging out in the middle of the screen looks a little clunky. And 20% off, quote, Linus Tech Tips to avail the discount. Dennis must have wrote this. <laughs> Must have wrote, must have written. <laughs> is that also off-centered? Can you bring that up again? Oh, yeah, sure. Can he do that? Or is it like 16 different buttons? I honestly to... don't. I have, uh, I have 34 different buttons. Oh, no, it's centered. It's just my 20 angle. 20% off. Quote Linus Tech Tips to avail, avail the discount. Avail the discount. He's trying. He's trying. He's doing a good job. We'll get there. Good he job, Dennis. Maybe needs a proofreader, though. Um, all right. Finally, the show is brought to you by Squarespace. Building your own website may seem... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Luke, that's really helpful. May seem daunting, but Squarespace is here to make it easier than figuring out how the self-serve line works at your local grocery store. Squarespace is an easy to use platform to start building your online presence right away. They offer customizable themes and templates for your online store, local business, portfolio, and more. They even look great on mobile devices. We use Squarespace for the Linus Media Group website and the LTX 2023 website. <laughs> Okay, and if you already have a website, Squarespace makes it super simple to port your domain over. Their 24-7 support is always there for you if you encounter a problem, and you can get started on your web page today by heading over to squarespace.com slash when for 10% off your first purchase. That's how you avail your discount. Well, that's certainly eye-catching. Thank you, Dennis, very much for the helpful additions to our otherwise bland and boring sponsor reads on the show we did we did have some uh some frame rate issues yes i did I notice next that. time that you that you trial stuff like that you need to trial it while live encoding yeah hmm. all right we'll figure it out 
Holy crap, this is a close three-way so race. So that's why I didn't want to include wow. Pouchy, because I knew Pouchy was going to win this, but then the remaining two are so close. Tech Sack at 33% of the vote, LT Teabag at 30% of the vote, and Pouchy McPouchface at just 36% of the vote. Yeah. So it's Tech Sack versus Pouchy McPouchface. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Last poll. Excuse me. Last poll. Um, hey, we should do a couple of merch messages. For those of you who are new to the WAN show, which seems to be a lot of you today, we've got 21,000 live viewers over on YouTube. We've got... Twitch is slow. One, one moment, please. My dashboard is loading. <laughs> Holy crap, this is really slow. 5,600 over on Twitch, and I have no idea how many are watching on Floatplane because we still don't have a Get dang view owned. counter. Get owned. Get owned. You get owned. <laughs> get own yourself. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, we've got a lot of new people watching. The way to interact with the show is not through super chats. I almost said merch <laughs> messages. Not through super there. chats, not through Twitch bits. It's merch messages. And what makes them superior to super chats and Twitch bits is that while just like those methods, you can absolutely throw your money at the screen for... No reason other than hoping for acknowledgement from people that you only know through a little screen in front of you. Um, not only that, but in case we don't get to your message or just even if we do, instead of just like lining Google or Amazon's pockets, you will get merchandise in the mail, water bottles, desk pads, whatever we're going to call this thing that holds tech stuff and is a pouch. Um, oh, oh man, we've got a new product to announce today that I'm so excited about we'll talk about that later Do we have multiple uh no no just one. Oh, okay the point is that if you send a merch message just go to lttstore.com and in the checkout you can send a merch message it'll either pop up down there dan might reply to you we might uh reply to your message live on the show and even if none of that happens you will definitely still get your order in the mail and we we make lots of really really good stuff so head over to lttstore.com all right, do you want to hit us with a couple of merch messages, Dan, before we move sure. on? Sure. The first one I have here is from Michael. Speaking of building moats last week, yes. do you think that there's still space on Tech YouTube for new channels to even come close as big as popular as you guys or others like MKBHD? I would have said no. And then Mr. Who's the Boss broke I was out actually big. Literally gonna say yes, specifically because of him. Yeah. He I think he proved it to me that it's possible. It's hard. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it's it's a it's a funny thing because as the platform has matured and as the tools to create video have become more and more accessible, like man, the production values you can get for a thousand dollars today are better than what you could do for probably 10,000 back when we started honestly like really particularly in spaces like lighting lighting has gotten cheap it's incredible what it you can do brutal at the beginning. with cheap lighting these yeah. days like you can get high cri bulbs at home depot now you know that that's the kind of thing that just <laughs> didn't exist 10 years ago right and but what's funny is that as access to the tools and as the strength of the platform overall has gotten better, the competition has also gotten fiercer. So I would say that today it is easier than ever to have a video blow up. Like YouTube algorithmically yeah. is so powerful. Yeah. Um, but I would say that today it's as hard as ever to build momentum yes to build a large it. to build a large channel to build yeah. a team yeah, yeah exactly so it's it's a it's a tough because you you might be able to hit like if you have one concept that you've been sitting on for years and you make like one really sick video you might be able to hit with one video but but continuing that keeping the role going being able to release not only like one two or three more but being able to release one two or three hundred more is really hard and you have to be there for the whole time. By the way, the poll is really slowing down in terms of votes that are coming in. We're only getting one or two trickling in at a time. And I think, I think we have a winner. It looks like it's going to be Texac. By 4% of the vote. By 4%. Whew. Whew. 
Wow, that was very close. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, we I'm, can leave it running, but like I don't... Yeah, we can let it run a little longer. Yeah. I don't think it's going to change much at this point. What were we talking about again? Right. Yeah, yeah. Could you break out? So yeah, I, I would have said I would have said no <clears throat> until... Um, I think we have said no in the past, actually. Yeah, yeah I, I think... Because I... And I will tell you that initially I thought the question was, can you still, like can you still break out in the tech space? And for that, the answer is absolutely yes. Because I think the future of the platform is many niche channels. Yeah. More than these, like, um, you know, like I, I see us kind of like a department store channel. Uh, and I think that we've seen a shift culturally away from the one-stop shop, away from the department store into the niche experts and that's a big part of the reason why we're growing our team that's why we're building the lab that's why we're hiring engineers and subject matter experts so that when it's time for us to really get laser focused on niches whether they're display or uh you know cpu gpu or cooling or whatever it is we're properly equipped for it because i think that a niche that has a hundred thousand people that are super dialed into it is way way easier to tackle these days than trying to uh, than trying to make broadly appealing tech content to try to hit a million or two million or ten million people, um, especially when there are so many channels that are doing that broad content so well. Because it's not just us. You have to. I mean, you already mentioned MKBHD, right? So you're going up against us. You're going up against Marquez. You're going up against Aaron. You're going up against a Jay's Two Cents and Austin. You're going up against all these folks. You just list names for like 20 minutes. Yeah, there's and then, so many. And then if you if you went on for long enough, you might end up with the uh, the creators. We're hoping to have it LTX. Sorry, uh, we'll, we will confirm those eventually for you guys. We just need a pr approval from these folks to tell you who's going to be coming. But if you, so if you asked me that, I'd say, you know, yeah, breaking out in a niche, no problem. But building a mega channel, man, I'm not going to say that I didn't work hard. I'm not going to say you didn't work hard, but we would be just dishonest if we didn't acknowledge that there was a significant degree of right place, right oh, time. Yeah. And you know what? It's always kind of funny to me. Having access to NCX was such a huge... Even back then, I thought the ship had sailed. And it wasn't that, it wasn't that stupid of a thought, right? Like, think back to when, when the channel started. So what was, what, was, what was that? 2009, we uploaded the first NCIX Tech Tips video. So back then, I mean, how long did web startup, you know, social platforms exist for? Nothing had lasted as long as what, 2009 to 14 years. Nothing la or, So I think YouTube started 2006, yeah. something like that. So, so nothing, sure. nothing lasted, uh, you know, 17, 18 years. So for me to look at it and go, yeah, I'm, I'm three years, I'm four years late to the party, you know, PC whiz kid and uh, Chilla Frilla and Locker Gnome, <laughs> you know. <laughs> These folks have all got it on lock, right? Like, I remember all of them. How could I possibly <laughs> hope to break into this space? Yeah. It wasn't even that stupid a thing for me to think, especially with the importance of subscribers back in that time, right? Once you had that critical mass, well, how else could anyone possibly hope to get on the homepage? Yeah. Ah, yeah. You know, yeah. things that mattered back then. <laughs> um, but I, I ended up being wrong. So I could be wrong again. Maybe the next big all-you-can-eat tech channel is brewing in the mind of someone who's watching the show right now. There's also like there's also other platforms. Um, I'm pretty sure they said specifically YouTube, but like yep. I think one of the reasons why why we did get a start and why a lot of other creators around that time got a start was people were slowly shifting away from TV at the time. Absolutely, something similar could happen to YouTube. Maybe yep. I don't necessarily. It doesn't really feel like it is TikTok. But maybe there's something no, especially that comes not around. if that North or that U.S. ban goes through. Yeah, like, but like okay. something something might happen. Who knows? Yep. Who knows what's going to happen in the world of apps or other potential websites? Um, and then content types like the the tech that we talk about. What is going to be out there eventually? We're talking about AR stuff. We're talking about yep. these weird AI integrations. We don't know the direction that either of those things are going to go, and maybe 
you are a fantastic source for whatever that ends up being. And that can be your niche. Who knows? Yeah. hundred um, percent. The float plane chat is hilarious Ryan. right now. Absolutely right. Hashtag not my sack. Stop the sack. Recount. <laughs> Impouchment. <laughs> what are you guys, Florida? <laughs> okay, that's an old joke. That's like going back to uh, what, what's his, what's his nuts like Gore Gore Bush or whatever. Um, anywho, <laughs> bring me pouchy or bring me death. <laughs> oh no. Okay, we're going. You back. guys should do. Oh no, I don't think it would be worth the run. But mm. you guys should do a version that has like a smiley face on it. And do like a limited run of Poachy McPoach faces. <laughs> I, it's probably not worth it. Speaking but. of run, um, uh, Mr. Wage posted in Float Plane Chat at Silicon Valley Bank, north of 93% of the bank's 161 billion in deposits are apparently uninsured per a recent regulatory filing. <sighs> Whoa. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, Want to hit us with another merch message, Dan? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've oh. Got- Sorry, I'm going to say oh. what you just said, but I'm going to say it through the mic. The Tech Sack is apparently back up on the store under the name Tech Sack. That was fast. Oh, what? It's up. Uh, no one has informed me of that. That doesn't seem right. It is up, though. Uh, Looking at it right now. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, okay, Nick, it's it's Tech Sack, uh, if you're watching. Uh, Tech Sack. One. No, it, it's as Tech Sack. Oh, it's Tech Sack. Yeah. Oh, so it's up. Oh. Yeah. Did I not say that? No, I, I think I I uh, I might have misspoke. I don't know. No, yeah, you probably didn't. Okay. Yeah, all good. All right. It's it's officially tech sack now. So if you want to um, get my sack in the mail, then you can order it. <laughs> Floatplane is not happy. Yeah, Floatplane Floatplane's never happy. It's funny because the more people oh, no. love us, it seems like the more angry they get with us. Yeah. Yeah, and and like we we love you back, Floatplane, and we're never angry with you. Can I can I take a moment to just shout out? Like a couple, a couple people. First of all, shout out the float plane peeps who happen to be thirty two thousand two hundred and fifty four yeah. strong these days. Yeah. And then I'd also like to take a moment to shout out the social team because they yes. have been absolutely yeah, annihilating <laughs> their targets for float plane exclusive content these days. Not not in terms of like the volume. They're, they 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 hit the volume targets, but they are crushing it in terms of the quality of the exclusives that we've been uploading. Um, this this one was really good. Uh, they were hanging out with the engineers over in Creator Warehouse. Just a casual 99.5% like-dislike yeah, ratio let's go. on this test run with our desktop injection molder. Um, it's just really cool to see some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes here that normally wouldn't get any any exposure there's a, there's a being appreciated the there's a meet the team with a vaughn right yeah that one actually went up on lmg clips as a promotion uh, for float plane and sense. i think it's going to stay up for either hours or a day or two or something like that but float plane is full of meet the teams with like i think like dozens literally dozens of Lots members of the of team at this point yeah. um kyle's is a recent one that ha- has been very very popular this is a sidebar thing because it's not it's not us but uh garbage time also passed three thousand subscribers sick let's go let's go all right dan hit me with another merch message okay i've got another one here hey guys since more oled monitors are being made is there really a point to getting one for somebody who plays mostly first person shooters and cranks the shadows up thus negating one of the points of an oled wait how how does that so cranking the shadows up i can see where you're coming from Right, like if you if you lift up uh, the dark parts of the oh, image, I, so that I you can more easily identify opponents. I misinterpreted this. Yeah, I I see where you're coming from. If all you ever do is play FPS games, get a CRT. Well, mm, uh, no, no, I I would still go OLED because from a gaming perspective, the biggest benefit of OLED is not the contrast or the color accuracy, because like you said. You know, for a competitive edge, many gamers will totally mess with their colors or their or their contrast or whatever else, gamma curves and all that. Um, but from a pixel persist, like an image persistence standpoint, from a pixel response time standpoint, nothing else modern. Like I'm not yeah, CRTs aside, nothing else modern even comes close to touching an OLED. Um, so the clarity 
of the image, particularly during fa fast movements, like if you are if you're whipping the mouse, uh, it is so much higher than an LCD that I would rather have a 240 hertz OLED over a 500 hertz LCD. I say that out of ignorance, though, because we haven't yet been actually hands on with a 500 hertz LCD. I think we're gonna get to check it out soon, but that's how I feel about it right now. Really, really love OLED gaming. And it's all about that lightning fast pixel response time and image clarity in motion. Hit me with yeah. one more and then we'll, we'll get to some more topics here. The last one. All right. I'm about to deploy another Stratus FT server for work. Are you? Basically really? Run... Here? Because I don't know about that. Oh, uh, sorry, Luke. Uh... <laughs> Uh, okay, a uh, merch message. Okay. Uh, this is from Anonymous. Uh, anyway, they basically run the CPUs and RAM in RAID 1. What's your favorite fault-tolerant, high-availability equipment? Oh. That's a difficult question. Yeah, man, I got to say, I was, I was really blown away when I visited IBM, and I got to get hands-on with IBM Z. Because on the one hand... I look at a product like IBM Z and I go, there's got to be a more economical, <laughs> open source, like, way to do this with off the shelf, like, super micro servers in running in a cluster or something. You know, like, the, the, the geek in me is sitting here going, this seems like yesterday's solution tomorrow. You know what I mean? Are they really engineering an entire CPU? for one system for like six customers like is this is this really the best way to do it? you know like that's that's kind of my my gut feeling but then you go and you look kind of like you're talking about you look at the way that they build you know raid one directly onto a, a onto a, like into a, a a memory subsystem or you look at the way that you can literally just yank mains power out of this thing and it completely doesn't notice and it's it's pretty cool i would say that if you want to see me kind of geek out over over fault tolerance that's the video to go watch because those things are what is it four nines they target something stupid like that I'm not sure off the top of my head but i forget likely. how many nines um do you, while i look it up do you want to explain the concept of nines uh oh it's it's like basically when you're when you're looking at something like uptime uh if you have 99.9 percent .9%, well if you look at an entire year the 0.1 percent that's remaining is actually a pretty significant amount of time so you want to increase your amount of nines because if you go from 99.9 .9 to 99.9 nine that's actually a very significant reduction in downtime that you just had so increasing the if you if you say like four nines that's the amount of nines past the decimal point that you have okay. so having more nines is more better ibm z reliability four z15s their commitment is seven nines so on average 3.2 seconds of downtime per year <laughs> <laughs> yeah see like that's sick that's actually kind of stupid yeah that's kind of amazing um and so it, yeah it was it was really cool not just seeing the hardware and like pulling cords out of it or whatever but some of what didn't make it into the video unfortunately just just like talking to the people who work on and who design these systems was was very cool because it's a it's a completely different mindset like you talk about running ram in raid one right i think to the average gamer if i said hey you can experience three minutes less downtime per year, and all it'll cost you is spending $600 instead of $300 on your memory. They look at you, look at you like you're a f***ing idiot. Apparently right? it includes the first two nines. Oh, okay. I've been referring to that incorrectly for a hot minute. All right, my bad. At any rate, seven nines, still wild. Yeah, so um, that's five past the decimal. Yeah. Um, Why would you include the first two? Whatever. Hold on a second. If it doesn't start with 99, you're having some problems. Yeah, apparently it does include the first whatevers. So that is five nines past the decimal. Yeah. That's still wild. Anyway, the point is, if you told the average gamer, hey, you can spend twice as much on your memory and it'll save you three minutes of downtime a year. Well, they, they, they'd tell you you're an idiot. Like, no, I think I can handle, what, what is that, two game crashes? 
over a span of 365 days is prob probably okay, and I'll save my few hundred dollars. But when three minutes of downtime could back up all of your client systems or cause some kind of catastrophic system fail. Okay. Oh, perfect example of this. When the Canadian debit infrastructure went down. You remember that? Yeah. yeah or yeah. or when when uh, our Rogers uh, telecom, man, I'm making Canada sound like some kind of backwater. <laughs> it's just the things we're more aware of. Yeah. Um, so, or when, uh, so Rogers Communications had a down, had downtime for like a day. And my understanding is in the postmortem to that, it basically came down to like, one system, you know, managed by one person, like had something went wrong with it. It's it's actually kind of amazing how patchwork our systems are. I mean, okay, for an example, not in Canada. Okay, you get like one bank that, <laughs> that disappears in the States and all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. Uh, well, the Silicon Valley startup scene has no money, so that's cool. <laughs> right? Like the, the, the way that the world is architected for very few points of failure that can take down the entire system. I've said this many times, and I don't know, maybe this is a dumb thing to talk about on a podcast, but like <laughs> if a terrorist wanted to really harm the city of Vancouver, okay? Oh, uh, hmm, uh, hmm. All they got to do is take out uh, like two bridges. Uh, we've had this conversation. <laughs> the entire region would grind to a halt. Yeah. I'm talking no commerce, no food, like nothing. We have we have nothing. There's well it's, there's it's mind blowing. There's that South Park joke. Uh, I love telling yeah. people about this where they talk about the one road in Canada. <laughs> Follow the only road. Uh, yeah. And then you realize that like at certain parts of the country, there is one road. <laughs> like, highway one is actually a very big deal up here. Yeah. And when like a bridge goes down and it happens to be in that area where there is just one road, like Canada is split in half temporarily. Yeah, <laughs> interprovincial shipping is actually done. It's 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 out. Yeah. It's 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 out. Yeah. Um, pontoon bridges for the wind, say people. There are places where I don't think it would be feasible. How would you put in a pontoon bridge to replace the port man? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, okay, let's talk about something good about Canada. I think the port man is the longest, um, like, suspension bridge. Like, like free, it's like oh. the longest freestanding suspension bridge or something like that in, in something. I don't know if it's, like, in North... Maybe it's only in Canada. Um, longest uh, suspension something. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure this is a thing. The Portman Bridge, the uh, one of the longest in the world, was constructed using the balanced cantilever method. Okay, one of the longest in the world. Well, all right, never mind. <laughs> but it's two kilometers long, which in real units that anyone cares about is 1.26. <laughs> uh, okay, what are we talking about? <laughs> Canada is just a road and a handful of bridges in a trench coat. <laughs> kind of, yeah. No! No, we're real! I, always, I swear! I was always confused by the South Park joke. And then I was reading the news however many years ago when one of those bridges did go down. And they were talking about how Canada was temporarily split in half. And I was like, wait. And I looked on a map and I was like, whoa. Okay. It literally comes down to one road. In my preteens leading up to, you know, thinking about that I would become a driver at some point, I asked my mom... Uh, to explain to me, because I hear the, the terms thrown around a lot, to explain to me the difference between a highway and another road. And the, re the reason for that is that one of the major arteries that um, we would travel on regularly, one Lougheed Highway, uh. at the part of Lougheed Highway where we would turn <laughs> off into like our, our neighborhood, like our residential region, um, at that part, it had traffic lights. Um, it was only two lanes, not not two and two, like two lanes, one each way, yeah, yeah, yeah. with not even a shoulder. Like I don't mean I don't mean you know no fancy fancy paved shoulder, uh, no you know uh, sidewalk. I mean it actually didn't have a shoulder. Not only that, but the left turn that we had to make 
into our neighborhood wasn't even traffic light controlled and there wasn't a left turning lane. Like you would just stop in the middle of this supposed highway to perform a left turn. And the worst part is that that was very rarely a problem. <laughs> I grew up in Ruskin, okay? Yeah. Cool. Um, what are we talking about? YouTube finally relaxes yeah. their overly restrictive profanity policy. Sort of. So does that mean I can say words like f and f Yeah, so I think so. The the sort of is that it's relaxed. It's not gone. Ah. I think some people interpreted this as like, oh, we can just do whatever we want now. It's like, no, it's not gone. Do We're go just on. Chilling out a little bit. Uh, James has a note here that on Thursday we had a short circuit video receive limited monetization because the host said penis lamp at the twenty three second mark. Penis lamp. Really. Yep. Okay. Yep. Are you going to elaborate nope. on this? Nope. No one gets you any topic information at all. Never mind. Uh, recap. <laughs> In November, YouTube changed its advertiser-friendly guidelines to be far harsher to obscene language. We talked about that on the Wan Show, among other things. Communication was poor, and the language of the new guidelines was vague. The changes applied retroactively which is the most brutal part. Super cool. Resulting in previously acceptable content being demonetized without creators knowing why. Now, after a few months of soul searching, <laughs> YouTube has announced a new set of Does softer Does Google have guidelines. a soul? Okay, uh, sorry. I don't know about that. Uh, their language is still somewhat vague, and it does not address all creator complaints, but there are now clearer examples of what is and isn't acceptable. Examples are always great in these situations. Videos containing moderate profanity, like asshole or douchebag, or occasional strong profanity, like outside the first seven seconds of a video are eligible for full monetization. Oh, so I didn't even have to bleep that, but I felt like it anyways. Videos containing strong profanity in the first seven seconds or throughout the majority of the video, mm -hmm. like are eligible for limited monetization rather than no monetization. I don't know if holding it works, Luke, but okay. Does it not? I'm not sure. It should. It's just a tone, right? Dan? Yes, it works. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you hold it for as long as you want. Okay, yeah, cool. thought so. It's just a tone. Um, videos demonetized after November's changes will apparently be re-reviewed in the coming weeks. Interesting. So stay tuned, and maybe your livelihood, something. <laughs> Maybe. According to YouTube, November's changes wound up being far harsher than they had actually intended. It's a discussion question. YouTube has to balance its relationship with advertisers and its relationship with creators. Is it striking the right balance? Is it enough to fix these oversteps after the fact? I think the biggest problem is that it was retroactive and it didn't have, it wasn't clear enough. Yeah, so as long as they're communicating clearly and they're not going back through your catalog, I think that the longer YouTube exists, the more they're going to have to reckon with the fact that some of the content on their platform was, Major and this isn't an excuse. There's an edgelord era on YouTube. But it was from a different time. Yeah. And so whether that's, whether that means that, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know the, I don't know the best way to deal with that. Cause I, I can see how, how uh, uh, an advertiser with modern sensibilities might, look at that old content that some people are still totally watching oh, yeah. and go, um, actually, no, that's not really what I signed up for. I mean, it's been, it's been kind of, uh, it's been kind of eye opening. I, I've, I've just sort of randomly here and there picked up episodes of, you know, old shows that I hadn't watched in a long time from like the early two thousands and just the casual, um, the, the casual sort of gay humor, casual use of the hard r um oh really it's jarring yeah it's it's jarring now and for casual use of hard r yeah yeah absolutely like uh like okay uh, it was an episode of american dad and it was just really? like yeah it wasn't for shock value it was just just like used Whoa. right well i mean here's the thing right that was in 2003 or something like yeah. 2002 yeah like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna deny that I dropped my fair share of hard R's back then because we didn't even, the, the term hard R didn't even exist. Hmm. We didn't think about it, right? And it's funny because to me, that doesn't feel like that long ago 
But to my kids... Are you talking like N-word hard R? What? No. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's how people use that term. No. I think that's so. That's the N-word. What are you guys talking about? Am I mistaken? I think so. No, the, the, one, the one with the... Uh, with, like for like mental disability. I'm pretty sure people use hard R in a very different way than you just used it. Oh. Okay, either hard way. Hard R means ending I understand, the N-word I with understand, a hard R. I understand what you mean. No, I'm not talking about that. Okay, cool. So I'm glad that I'm we have cleared Neo that I'm freaking Neo over here, dude. We're dodging bullets. That yeah. was bad. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> right. I forgot about the part where I said, yeah, I just like used a cat. Yeah, no, uh, actually. <laughs> That's what I was like. I was pretty surprised with American Dad, and then you were like, "Yeah, me too." I was like, "Whoa!" Okay. Yeah, no, you've All known right. me a long time. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, and yeah, never been a problem. No. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, <All right. laughs> we can breathe. Everything's okay. Cool. All so right. I hope um, everyone likes not having a job anymore on Monday, <laughs> because apparently I'm a giant racist. We didn't, we didn't lose our money in the in the bank crash. The yeah, bank no. run, <laughs> in the audience run. <laughs> Alright, we're good. Whew, okay. We're good. Cool. Um, so anywho, <laughs> the point is that to like to my kids, 2002, 2003 is a long time oh, ago. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, 10 years before I was born. 1976 is a long time ago to me. It's all it's all relative. I think right? so, it's like yeah, peace and love, hippies. <laughs> like that that's a world that never coexist. I never coexisted with, right? And so it was it was just it was interesting to me how jarring it was. Even though, like I said, to me, people casually using the R word then is that better? I think so. <laughs> okay, casually using the R word was what? It, yeah, it was it was surprising. Um, all right. So, why don't we do a couple merch messages? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, okay. Uh, this is from Romeo. Uh, would you guys consider a hot dog or a burger a form of sandwich? Or oh. would they be their own food category? No, Show I hate work. it when I hate it when McDonald's calls their burgers sandwiches. A because they're burgers, and B because I think that sandwich has a, a connotation associated with it that whatever the thing is is actual food. And I strongly disagree that anything McDonald's sells is food. Heck yeah. Okay, you want another one? These conversations make me uncomfortable. It's like when people ask if cereal is soup. I'm like, I don't, I don't even, I don't. No. I don't want to. Cereal is cereal. Guess you would never show. eat soup dry, but you can eat cereal dry. That's the distinction. Never had like a packet of ramen without cooking it? Oh, crap. Haha. -ha. See, this is why I just don't, I don't even want to have the conversation. I don't want to know. I want to live in ignorance. <laughs> It's just food categories. It's not going to affect my life. I don't like. You can't improve my life by convincing me that that it, cereal is soup. I just. I'm just better off where I am. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Yeah, one. this is awful because yeah, even See if you I mean? go like yeah, it's a milk bar? base, but so is a cream of broccoli soup. Granola bar. Uh, granola bar. If you were to take cream of broccoli soup and like freeze dry it into a bar. What if you freeze it into a popsicle type? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, this is making me uncomfortable. See? Let's move on. See? Yeah. I don't like it. Uh, next one's up from <laughs> Jacob. Happy Friday, guys. I'm an IT engineer that is often disappointed by mature technologies or protocols. Uh, what consumer or enterprise tech disappoints you most? Example, Bluetooth, printers, AV, SMB, etc. Oh, I mean, well, you nailed it on printers. Printers is just too easy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a super low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Um... Man, I feel like this is the sort of thing that I rant about all the time. I would say I would say voice recognition yeah. is a huge disappointment for me. Not because it's terrible compared to what we started with, but because the promises were so much better than what we ended up with. It took me four attempts to call my wife the other night. I said, call Yvonne Ho Mobile. And the first time, it's, it, it got Yvonne Home Mobile. 
which I don't have a home number listed for her, so I don't know why it would think Yvonne anything home anything because there is no home number. So it was just like, I'm sorry, who do you want to reach? And then I said, Yvonne Ho, mobile. And it goes, Yvonne How, mobile. <laughs> I don't have an Yvonne How in my address book. So, so I try again, Yvonne Ho, mobile. And it goes, it, and oh man, this is the thing that makes me most angry. You know how it'll do like the, like, like it'll, it'll kind of try to um, transcribe it to text as you're talking. So it got it. Yvonne Ho Mobile. And then it'll And then it like correct. changed it. Yeah, like, yeah. No! <laughs> you you were so close! <laughs> you had a perfect match for something on my physical storage of my device! <laughs> and you undid it! Why yeah, that's that's that annoys me. I, I'm gonna pick mine as Windows. Um, really? And and this is actually kind of why. Because like I actually and I know a bunch of people might disagree with me, and I don't really care about that part. But I actually quite like the design aspect of Windows 11. Right. I like how it looks. I even have been won over by the taskbar thing being in the middle. Yeah. No. No. You're yeah. objectively no. wrong. I'm no. okay with that no. because there's an option to move it, so I don't oh, care. Oh, sure, fine. But like leaving it in the middle is objectively wrong. Sure, but you can put it to the side if you want, so it doesn't really matter, right? But sure. the search has been completely bastardized. The search just like doesn't work. Yeah, it's amazing how bad the search is since Windows 10. That should not be possible. It shouldn't. Like it's, that's it's remarkable. Crazy, absolutely crazy. The search is like the main thing Windows is like almost four in a user experience way at this point, and it's garbage. Like that's. Yeah, you for, mean the start for, menu, not the same. Yeah, you said Windows, but the start menu is. Has no, I mean Windows in general, and I'll get I'll get into oh. more points in a second. All right, okay, so, all right. So the start menu is atrocious, and most users aren't going into things like control panel these days and stuff, to be completely honest. Most users are not. So yeah, most user interaction with Windows at this point is just the start menu, and the start menu is rough. Or the desktop. I, yeah, I know enough. a lot of people who just, just the computer fart everything is onto the desktop, their desktop. And the start menu. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. The other reason why I'm frustrated is there's certain things that, like, I feel like Windows should be doing at this point that it's not. Sure. And one of those was, like, I was talking to my brother about this the other day because he needed to send me or send someone or me. I don't remember what the situation was, but a file transfer needed to happen. Yeah, I get it. How is there no share menu like you have on Android and iOS and macOS, yeah. basically everything else? Yeah. How is there no built-in screen recording? I don't know. And, like, how how... At this point in time, I should be able to have, and it shouldn't have to go through OneDrive, okay? It should be able to tunnel directly. I should be able to have a family group. And if my brother wants to share me some big file, yep. there should, it should be able to set up an encrypted you know thing what? between us and handle it. You, I think, I want to revise my answer because file sharing it has got to be it for me. Yeah, and like how Windows hasn't taken care of that. How is it that I am sitting here next to you I, and we cannot transfer at line speed over a simple A to A USB cable or at full Wi-Fi speed over the hotspot we are both connected to without going through some some Crazy. onerous, tedious, yeah. handshaking yeah. authentication system. Yep. It's like, no, I, it's fine. It's that guy. It's okay. Uh, just chill. Uh, or the fact that my phone is sitting here and it's not as simple as just like beep, boop, and it's on. And now there are ways to do that. Like, for example, there's actually pretty good uh, file browsing apps where you can just dump files into SMB shares on Android and, and on iOS, for that matter, which is more impressive to me. But it all needs to be premeditated. I can't just spontaneously be sitting in a coffee shop next to someone that I'm meeting and go, here, let me just drag and drop this file over to you. That is, if Windows 12 doesn't have that, I'm going to be sitting there going, what the f*** what have they actually doing? been working Cause on? Because this is, this is like, yeah. I understand there have been improvements, okay? So don't just hold on. But what out of the user experience, the, not user experience, in the way that you use Windows, what has really changed that much since like Vista? Almost nothing. Yeah. Vista was, Vista? Underrated. And I don't even necessarily want to get into that. But like, <laughs> but like seriously, there, there, there have been improvements. Yes, there's been a bunch of improvements. There's the shell thing now. There's all this kind of stuff. But for the average normie user, I don't believe that yeah. their Windows experience has really been improved since 
maybe you know maybe the average computer can run it a little better now stuff like that yeah but like that's not really on them and search was better in vista search was better and it had some innovations that have actually gone away like the uh the games folder that would yeah. organize all your games for you yeah like that was pretty cool. And now every every piece of software that has to do with gaming has decided they're going to do it. Yeah. So I have eighty seven different game managers on my computer because every graphics thing is like, oh, we're, you can launch our games through us as if anyone's going to do that. And then also Steam, and then also everything else. It's yeah. like, oh my god, it's just there's ugh, the fact that the the games for Windows Live is so terrible is really frustrating. Like. Games for Windows Live, uh, imagine an actually really good version of like the the PC it's, Xbox app or Games hard. for Windows Live. I know Games because for it's Windows always Live been bad. Was basically just the worst possible DRM. But imagine you were like the PM of that, and you could drive oh, the direction. Oh, I could have made it awesome. Yeah, it could be sick. maybe because you have to get the games industry to cooperate with you, so that's tough. If there's a more fragmented industry, um, I I haven't. But seen it, it has potential. That has been squandered. That's true. That's fair. And like, there's so there's so much you could do with Windows to just make it an awesome experience. And it's just ah. Steve J three D says, "I'm hearing 30 day Vista challenge." Oh God, no! That would actually be very risky for security. people like us because of yeah. security. Yeah, yeah. We'd be uh, we we might get harpooned. Um. But like, really, I'm I'm thinking back to like, okay. From XP to Vista, yeah, there was some changes in like how I use the computer. But at this point, like my OS upgrades have been for compatibility reasons only. Yeah. I have genuinely not wanted a new OS since seven. Yeah. Like at all. And I look back at screenshots of XP and I feel nostalgic. And I like like the aesthetic and stuff. I look back at screenshots of seven and I'm like, oh yeah. I could just use that now and it'd be completely fine. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's very, it's been disappointing to me. Um, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, Plus no drivers for Vista. Yeah, but like those are the reasons why people are upgrading. Compatibility, yeah. drivers, security, stuff like that. It's not like, oh, wow, there's this new feature in the new one that is really compelling. I can now just because it's my brother and I'm in the Microsoft family group or whatever. Yeah. I can just send him whatever I file file I want from wherever in the world. Microsoft's going to find a way to tunnel us. We don't have to pay for some extra service. It should be fine. But that's just not possible. Search is just borked. So like I, I can't find local files because it's constantly just binging things. It's just like, oh my goodness, like it's so rough. I don't know. Like it's even it's like even worse than the voice thing you were describing, where it's like it's trying to interpret voice and it gets it right and then corrects it to wrong, which is really bad and dumb. I literally typed this in. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is, is just like you left nope. no room <laughs> yeah. for misinterpretation. Like, yeah. And it still is like, nah, there's some local files, but I'm not going to bring them up. I'm just going to bing it. Like, stop. I thought you liked bing. Uh, they, wow, that's super cool, Giancarlo Sar. Uh, basically, uh, char charity raising thing. That's awesome. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to get into LLMs because honestly, until GPT four comes out, it's like not that interesting. But Bing's been neutered super hard. Uh, let's talk about a new product on LTT Store, but not the one that we're actually launching this week. We are planning a collab with the original makers of the ModMat. Oh. Mod right. Oh. Yeah. We have we have right. reached an agreement in principle to move forward uh licensing their their licensing their trademarks and patents to uh to create a mod map product. But right now we're in the very, very early stages. We obviously have some ideas of what we want to to make it the best possible mod map on the market. Um you know, obviously the place to start for us was collaborating with the creators of the original, but there are some things that we want to add. So I don't know how many of these are going to make it from my wish list into an actual physical product, 
but um, some of the ideas that we've had are heat resistant. Dan, I was thinking of you. Uh, heat resistance, so if anyone were to accidentally leave a soldering iron or a hot glue gun or something like that on one. Did he do this? Uh, no, no. I just, oh, okay. I just, I think of oh, Dan sometimes. I gotta go back to HQ2. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if someone were to leave uh, a hot item on it, <laughs> so somebody's it already typing through. Maddie McMatt face. <laughs> no, no. Um, I'd love to have some kind of embedded, um, like screw management, like kind of uh, like embedded mm, magnets, so, so yeah. that you could kind of just stick, uh, stick, ma uh, stick like iron containing screws or uh, ferrous screws or, or whatever screw else. Sorting area yeah, built into the onto mat. onto a, like a little spot, or maybe it could be an attachment. I don't know. There's lots of different ideas. Um, one idea we have already that I'd really like to move forward with is right now, uh, like whether you pick up one from Uline or even the original Mod Mat or anything like that, the way that you attach an anti-static strap to it is with that awful like button interface. Yeah. I know it's industry standard or whatever, like that, that's fine, but what if you could make it modular? So what if you had a really strong magnetic interface that you can stick the button thing on so that every time you attach your strap, it just sticks onto there then you could theoretically use it for something else too. then you could have different pieces so you could have a little um like a little okay like you know like those little wrist strap um things so they have like a like a little bar and then you put a thing through it and you tie a wrist strap onto it so you could just have like a little bar that you could clip an alligator clamp to mm -hmm. because i mean that's super annoying right when you have one of those button interface ones and then you have a wrist strap that has an alligator <laughs> clamp you're like this doesn't really this doesn't really go on here. So if you could have like a modular interface for that and it could be magnetic, uh, that was one of the ideas that I had. Um, yeah, I, so anyway, the point is that there is a post in the merch section of the forum. So if you guys have any creative ideas for what you'd like to see in a mod mat, uh, talk about what you look for, what you like, what you dislike, uh, your favorite, your least favorite and why, and if you think there are any key features that are missing from any mod mats that are currently on the market, and we are going to try to address it. We want to make the best darn mod mat. And uh, like I said, really, really excited to be starting from a place where we're, where we're working with like the original creators of the mod mat. Um, pretty, pretty cool. I actually Sweet. still have my original mod right mod mat on my uh, build station at home in the basement oh, that's cool and that was uh, that was one of the things that sort of prompted me to finally get off my butt and ask someone else to do something for me no i was like you, nick you was noticed, the one who reached out you noticed like this is a little old yeah it, it's pretty old and i was like <laughs> yeah like what happened to these guys oh they're still around okay why don't we reach out because i think that would be awesome very excited can you buy theirs anymore i actually don't know that's a good question they don't seem to be able to on their site but i don't know they still have copyright 2013, which is pretty sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dan actually mentioned this before the show. They're still advertising Firefox 3. Cool. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I recognize that for sure. Ah, <laughs> look at this! Hey! My unboxing! This video must still be around. Wow! That's awesome. Mod right Mod Mad unboxing video. Just casual nine-year-old video. June 13th, 2013, almost 10 years old. Nice. Nice. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. No, this is the one. Or wait, is this the one I have at home? I'm not sure. It might be the bigger one. Uh, oh, no, it wasn't seeing it at home that, made, <clears throat> that prompted me. It was seeing the one on Dan's desk. <clears throat> so I have one of these, and then Dan, you have one of these on your desk too, right? That's right. Yeah, I do all my electronics on it. I, um... Uh... It came with my desk. This one, right? Uh, that's the one, yeah. Yeah. That might be the it's one I'm still that using. One. That around a few oh my times. god, I'm, I'm having my own starstruck moment. <laughs> I get to use Linus's mod man. Oh my god. Um, just relax, okay? <laughs> but yes, that is the act that is the actual one from that video nine years ago. I still going strong nine years later, right? It's literally perfect. I I, I would not really have guessed terrible. that it's been in use for nine years. It's amazing. Yeah, so we're we're going for it. We're going for it. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I think we've got the right starting point. I think we've got kind of some really good ideas to evolve what is sitting at my build station and what's on your desk. That's yeah, going to be good. Uh, okay, we will finally talk about the product we're launching this week. I didn't let okay. Luke. I didn't let Luke touch it, but this is one that has been in the works for good gravy. 
I'm pretty sure we started this before Bridget joined. Whoa, okay. Wait, no, is that quite right? No, no, it must have been very early in her tenure. So it's been well over a year in development. So we we completely missed like an entire spring, winter, fall <laughs> cycle of availability that we had targeted. And we are now through the fall and winter and in getting dangerously close to the spring of like the next target for it. <laughs> but we wanted to take the time to get it right and it's finally here. It's the 3D down jacket. Do I do I go now? We did a. Oh, is that? Wait, which one? That's this, yours. That's this yours. Is, oh no, this isn't mine. This is the small. I have oh. mine in my backpack. Oh. Yeah. I know, uh, okay. I know. So yeah, you get you get okay, to you get okay. to play with it now. So what's really cool about this thing is the material. Um, sometimes it feels nice. Sometimes you start the product development process with a garment you're trying to create. The shirt that Luke is wearing, for example, we set out to create a t-shirt that was really comfortable and blah, 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 et cetera. And we sought a material to make it out of. They can't see any of that. Uh, actually, Dan, do you wanna, you wanna man the camera? Um, Hold on, let me, let me redo it. With the 3D down jacket, we found this really cool material. Um, it's not quite down. It's not quite 3D printed. But there is a down layer out of the, I believe it's 11 layers on the jacket. Uh, let me double check. It says um, it's 3D printed down fabric features, stain resistant, breathable, four-way stretch, lightweight, yeah, so heat retention, it, wind resistant, water resistant. It's not, okay, it's not 3D printed in the same way that you would imagine like a plastic part. But it is an additive process. Did I just, oh, hello, Dan. <laughs> uh, I was like, is this a video of how it's made? Wow. <laughs> but it is laid down with an additive process that deposits the fibers rather than weaving them. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to have this kind of cobweb pattern that puts room between them for better breathability. And it also makes the insulation absolutely fantastic for the thickness. Um, so yeah, check it out. The outer shell is a blend of nylon and spandex. This is YKK. So uh, of course. Yeah. YK um, zipper water resistant? Yep. Uh, of course. Uh, all the seams are taped. Um, I believe it's 18,000 oh. millimeters of water resistance. We never call anything waterproof, uh, water resistance, internal, internal pockets. But what's really special about it is the, the 3D the 3D down or a 3D printed down or whatever you kind of want to call it. There, there is a down component to it. Uh, but the, the interior material, because it's super insulating, it's really comfy. So if you're the kind of person like me and like I assume Luke, who would just be in a t-shirt, even in fairly adverse weather, but might want a jacket when he goes outside, it's really, really nice on the skin. Um, we spent a lot of time on getting the fit just right. There is a little bit of stretch in the outer shell though. Um, it's breathable with good wind resistance. It's reasonably uh, water resistant. It's lightweight. I just absolutely love this thing. It looks really sharp. Where's um, is there any branding on it? Just a I little bit. I haven't seen any on the very bottom right. I think um, of the bottom there. Yeah, if you stand up, maybe we'll be able to see it. Whoop whoop. And he wax the, and he wax the thing. There's a little. Uh, can you see it? There's like little dots that make a little LTT. We're going for really subtle branding on this. We wanted it to just look really clean. Um, yeah, I'm trying to show it off. It's a little hard. Yeah, don't right, worry about it's right it. There. It's it's fine. The point is that it's, uh, yeah, it's light. It's comfy. It's super, super warm for the weight. And the hood is big enough. That was something that we actually that really struggled with. Yeah. <laughs> I like huge hoods. They're yeah. good because if you wanted to wear like a toque or something under it, you actually can. But there's two things that, um, th okay, again, this took a while. Um, you can adjust the hood such that, and the way that it pulls on it, it doesn't have to be huge. And then there's adjustments around the bottom as well. Um, another thing that took us I'm kind of there's... forever, to, yeah, there's, there's another yeah. one on the other side. Um, another thing that took us forever to get right is the adhesive on the sleeves. So the sleeves air a little bit on the long side because we've gotten really good feedback from people about long sleeves. Um, but obviously, if you want them to stay in place, you're going to have to have adjuster things. Okay, but hold that up to the mic while you rip it off. It's really strong. Yeah. It will not come off, and it's not 
like your typical hook and loop path fastener if you look at it closely. It's like oh. a really cool one that really definitely super does not come apart. Funky. Yeah. So this I was, is a nice like almost like rubbery like soft touch textile to it too. Yep. Texture. I am this is nice. so so happy with this thing. This is really nice. It's really expensive. Thanks, Dan. Um, it's a two hundred and fifty dollar jacket. Like our cost is pretty high because these it materials are feels too nice to not be really expensive. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, it is what it is. People, I, you know, it's a, it's a really funny thing. Whenever we talk about pricing for stuff, there's two camps. There's the, oh my God, I would never spend more than $30 on a jacket camp. And then there's the... Which is fine. That seems cheap. I would never spend less than $600 on a jacket camp. Which is also fine, I guess. And then there's shockingly little middle ground. It's, it's, a really, it's, a really interesting, it's a really interesting thing seeing everyone's different perception of value. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, inter it's an interesting observation. Um, WB something, anyway, whatever, in Twitch chat says, $250 without apparent branding is weird. I feel like people who shop on LTT want it to be known. We want it to stand without the brand. Um, that's, yeah. that's a big part of what we're I was I was happy that there was subtle branding. Yeah. Like, I, I yeah, I like that personally. So I, uh, I'm looking for, I've seen a lot of people picking them up in the merch messages today, and I'm looking forward to seeing people's feedback on the store. If you're not convinced, don't believe me. Uh, believe what people post on the store. I mean, our, our reviews are basically always excellent. I really like the feel of the materials. I'm really confident in this one. Yeah. This yeah. one's a killer. Yeah. Um, it's taken long enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want LTT branding low-key. I get that. I could see people wanting it. I just... I. So I am someone who went to a lot of a lot of shows. I went to a lot of conventions, and my clothing for many many years was effectively comprised of convention gaming clothes. companies, yeah, tech companies, yeah. And now it's comprised of LTT store merch, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's it's kind of nice to have some nice things like this. It's a very nice jacket. It's not a cheap jacket. I'm kind of happy that it isn't covered in branding. Right? Like, I could, you could wear this out to somewhere very nice. Yeah, of course. And it would look really sharp because well, it's really sharp. The thing is that, like, stuff is designed a lot of the time for, like, I need to wear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to be, like, you guys got to think about this, right? On Saturday, I don't want to be a billboard for LTT, actually. I don't want to get approached because people recognize the merch the logo, yeah. necessarily. Yeah. So when we were putting together like an outerwear item, I'm kind of sitting here going, mm. once in a while, like I'm into it, I'll wear my swack it out or whatever. But if it's raining and miserable and I'm cranky, I'm just on a black jacket. <laughs> just don't talk to me. <laughs> to be clear, it's fine. it's fine to talk to me. I'm, I'm super down. I just mean, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be so loud. It's also kind of better, like, at least in my opinion, if someone just recognizes you as you instead of being like, I have seen that logo on the internet, you must be the guy, you know? I don't know. That to me, at least. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on. Next topic. Secret shopper update. Um, no details on the date, but obviously, at some point, we will be working on another round of secret shopper, or maybe we're already working on it. Who knows? Uh, but during the last round, the company that wound up well behind the pack was Dell Alienware. After promising up and down, after the first secret shopper, that they had completely overhauled their customer service standards, their terrible, pushy customer service got us an overpriced, underperforming gaming computer that earned them dead last. Dell is once again asking you to, sorry, Dell is once again promising that they've changed, they've really changed this time, and they have instated extensive diagnostics and quality control measures to find gaps in their customer service. They also claim that they have dialed back sales incentives and increased focus on customer satisfaction scores, which was a key criticism that we made about the incentives for their sales team at the time. 
Um, there is no word on whether they've increased base salary for reps, which we also brought up and is a key part of what makes those commission incentives so tantalizing because as far as I could tell, these people were, were desperate, absolutely desperate to sell these warranties and uh, on-site services and uh, financing because it, clearly there was, it, I don't know. Sometimes you get a vibe sometimes, right? Where it's like, this is not just training. Like this is survival. Yeah. Was how I felt about it. Yeah. Um, so I told Dell, all right, I'll pass this along, but I'm not your PR department. I'm not a mouthpiece for you guys. I am passing this along for only one reason. The reason I'm passing it along is so that now you guys and us and Dell are all on the same page that it should be really good. So when Secret Shopper happens or happened, I really hope that we do not find the same things that we did last time. Yeah. Because un unprompted, okay, this is an email that landed in my inbox. Hold on a second. Let me let me just let me just check something real quick here, because I think it was it it was pretty much out of the blue, like out of absolutely nowhere. Here, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. here we go. Okay, so my first outreach about this was in 2020. Um, so I heard from my Dell contact who put me in touch with. Uh, Director of Communications for Client Solutions Group, something, 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 okay? And I basically went, yeah, you know, uh, good luck with that. Okay, I didn't hear anything for over a year since December of 2020, and then I randomly got an email from this person on January the 6th, and then I just have put off dealing with it until then. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like this long thing Ooh. that's pretty much like, Here's all the ways that we're fixing everything. And so I'm sitting here going, if you are completely unprompted, essentially, going to send me this list of ways that you're doing way better. Something might have changed. I expect it to darn well be better when it comes time to have a look at it. Yeah. So good luck with that. <laughs> that time might not be now. We still can't tell you. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? Still I'm, got some I'm kind good of stuff scrolling here. through right now. We did all the main topics, it looks like. Farewell to the Fairphone 2. See ya. Yeah, uh, it'll have its last security update this month. Seven years. Wow. After it first launched, they only promised three to five years of updates back in 2015, and they will apparently continue to sell parts while supplies last. If you wish to continue using a Fairphone 2, you'll have the option of installing a custom ROM like Lineage OS or trading it in for a 50 euro voucher for Fairphone's eStore. So this, the discussion question here is it's clearly possible to make a profit with a modular long-lasting phone. Uh, what would happen if a major manufacturer took the lead with a genuinely sustainable high-powered phone? Uh, well, um, hell would freeze over, I guess, because the direction the industry's been going has been the complete opposite yeah, of that. not that. Um, and I don't know, their investors would probably be mad because I don't think you can make as much money. I mean, that's the problem, Right. I Always. think we've proven with LTT Store that you can, you can make money and not be super toxic about it. But can you make enough to satisfy investors? Because it's not enough to be profitable. I mean, we've talked about this a ton. You have to be more profitable than the other guy. And certain more profitable X. than last year. Yeah, yeah. It's just, in, in a finite world... How can you, how can you expect infinite growth? And like a lot of, a lot of different places, even if they can't have growth, it doesn't mean they're not successful. Yeah. Their current amount of profit might be very healthy and they might have saturated the market and that's fine. And they can keep doing better and they keep innovating to keep that profit level where it is. And that's not a bad thing, but places just only go on growth yeah people talking about yeah it's never enough to satisfy investors yeah 100 percent, exactly um speaking of investors ace Attack says they are optimistic 
despite rough financial seas. So Ace Attack, uh, you might not know of them because they don't have much of a consumer-facing brand anymore, but they are best known for their LCLC, or low-cost liquid cooling solutions, the likes of which that you would have seen over the years resold by companies like Corsair. Corsair <laughs> or, I mean, Corsair, I think, is really the biggest partner, but also system integrators. Um, they had a pretty weak last year, and they have now reported a 47% drop in revenue in the fourth quarter of 2022 compared to 2021. The tech sector is taking an absolute pounding. Like, I mean that in every sense. Yeah. It's bad. You see, like, Intel's last results are like they lost like $700 million or something like that. Like, I'm just, I'm looking at this going, holy shnikes, are these guy's going to survive. Oh, yeah, they are. They're just going to lay everyone off. Okay, cool. So that's great. But anyway, they reported a 47% drop in revenue in the fourth quarter of 2022 compared to 2021. I remember thinking about this when the pandemic boom happened. And, and all those computer sales happened. And I was like, okay. Yeah. You guys are riding high on this and you're super excited. But here's the thing. There's a finite number of computers that I need. Yeah. And I feel like... <laughs> It's a lot more than what most people need. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I, I'm, I'm obviously kidding. Yeah, I have a lot of computers. And but, partially due to the conversation we had earlier about Windows, but also due to a lot of other reasons, there isn't a huge reason to upgrade that quickly these days. The upgrade cycle has, from what I can see, gotten longer. And so if you guys are selling twice as many computers today... There's going to be a reckoning. Sorry, I got to throw this out there. Uh, Jonathan in Flowplane Chat saying the tech sector is getting straight up LTT bagged is hilarious and oh, very topical. Right. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so, the, so, so, so the reckoning is here. People just don't need a new computer. Yeah. I, I really do think it's partly economic uncertainty, but also partly people just straight up not needing a new computer. And when there's economic uncertainty, wants somewhat go out the window, right? So like, even if you're like, oh, I could run this game slightly faster. Most games are really easy to run these days anyways, to be completely honest, but yeah. They reported an overall operating loss of $5.4 million in part Sheesh. due to property, equipment, and development investments of $22.2 million. This drop is likely due to the same market contractions that have been affecting other computer parts manufacturers. In the same quarter, they announced their 8th gen coolers and sales are currently trending slowly upwards, so they believe the market is stabilizing that they have the financial health to maintain operations until conditions improve. Uh, anyway, the, the main reason for this is not that I think you guys particularly care about Ace Attack, but it was just an excuse to talk about how that the that boom and bust has definitely happened and it's uh, yeah it's kind of scary because there's definitely going to be some smaller players that are struggling more than you know, the intels and amds and microsoft's of the world speaking of struggling have you ever struggled to get your printer to work after you installed third-party ink because hp was all like you and uh, pushed a firmware that prevented the use of ink cartridges without HP chips in them. This it this sucks. Oh yeah. This sucks so much. Oh yeah. I love my old Samsung laser printer. I have like an ML 2010 or something like that. 2020. I can't remember. It was like it has a sticker on it that's like world's most compact color laser printer. So whichever one that is. And when Samsung sold their printer business to HP. I didn't really think about it at the time, Did but update it? but the only way that HP could extract a ton of value from that, aside from just eliminating a competitor, had to be to engage in these kinds of toxic anti-consumer practices. Oh yeah, HP is is essentially making it so your printer won't work if you have ink in it that doesn't have an HP chip in it. Um, they've engaged in similar behavior for years. Using the rationale, and this is a joke. I remember back at NCIX, I had to sit through a presentation like this from an HP rep, like explaining the, the consumer benefits of, <laughs> of first-party ink. And I'm sitting here going, 
you, no. you, you know I have like whole jars of ink at home and I'm a, I'm a keep using them with my little syringes, right? Like they, and they're talking about like the technology of the nano droplets or whatever. I'm like, yeah, sure. If I was a professional printing house, by all means, but I just need to hand in my stupid report and I need a colored you know, yeah. bar graph on it or whatever. Like yeah. I don't, um, so they've used the rationale that they're ensuring the customer experience. But courts in three different countries have ruled against them in multiple Good. class action lawsuits with pen penalties worth millions of dollars. That's the problem, though. Millions of dollars is just cost of doing business to a company that's operating at HP scale. We've been talking about wimpy fines on the WAN show the whole time the WAN show has existed. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> they need to crank these. It needs to actually hurt the companies. When the fine is significantly less than the profit they're going to have by just continuing to do it. There's, there's this quote of somebody talking about how um, certain things are just different for the rich. And it's, it's talking about parking downtown. And they're like, yeah, a parking ticket for some people is really brutal. A parking ticket for other people is just like how you pay to park your car. They don't actually care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't impact them. It's still more efficient for them to just park illegally and pay the fine than it is to go park properly. It's the Final, same problem. Final Fantasy Tactics doesn't have a great translation in its original North American release, but this is a gem. Uh, WeGraph says, if the penalty for a crime is a fine, that law only exists for the lower classes. That's 100% yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like it, it's, And this fine, if it's not more than what they're benefiting from doing this, they're just going to keep doing it because they're still profiting off of it. It's not, it doesn't work. Have you still not played Final Fantasy Tactics? No. It is so good. It is so good. I think they released it on Android. Actually. There is no excuse, sir. You need to play Final Fantasy Tactics because aside from the stellar gameplay, and it really is good and it really does hold up, the story is outstanding. It, everything is morally ambiguous and it's not clear who the good guys are and who the bad guys are and it's 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 deep and it's wonderful uh what is waddle, waddle. Or war of the lions is it yeah. final fantasy tactics war of the lions well it depends so one of the releases i think like the advanced release I, I don't know there's there's multiple releases of the game war of the lions i think is like a more updated version of it okay yeah final fantasy tactics so good so good uh, AMD drivers have been borking computers with a rare bug. Um, they can put computers into a boot loop, rendering them inoperable. AMD has acknowledged the problem a month after it was first noticed and has helped at least one computer journalist through a complicated workaround. The glitch only occurs when installing the AMD GPU driver, opting for a factory reset clean installation, then having the misfortune of having Windows automatically update in the background. It all, it's always Windows Update. Speaking of things that just should be way better by now, no permanent fix yet exists, but it can be avoided by updating Windows before performing any installations. We have some LTX Expo updates. Ooh, this is exciting. Asus ROG is our title sponsor for LTX 2023. Let's go. Thanks, Asus nice. ROG. Also, Ubiquity is our title sponsor for the Whale Land. I knew they were going to provide networking equipment, but that's awesome. Since when does Ubiquity ever spend money? <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's a legitimate question. That's fair. that's fair. It's like asking when does NVIDIA ever spend money? Actually, it's not Never. like asking that because the difference yeah. is that Ubiquity has a philosophy of building products that sell themselves, and NVIDIA is just the cheapest b on the entire face of the earth. Um, it's, it's a completely separate problem. Um, and, oh, this is cool. Epic Games XPC Build Simulator 2 sponsorship for the water cooling workshop booth. We're also going to be working with EK Waterblocks. Details coming in a future update. I haven't seen Rod in the chat today, but I assume you guys are coming up, right? Got to. I mean, if Bob and Rod aren't there, is it really LTX? I don't. Have they missed one? I don't think so. I don't know if they so. were at the first one. Were they at the first one? 2017 was the first one, right? I'm trying to remember. That was the first one's like a it's a blur for me. I they weren't involved in running the first one. I know that. But they they yeah. have hosted booths for us at the yeah. last couple and those guys are They've absolute been at the good ones. <laughs> chads. Yeah, Rod's in there. 
nice. I'll be at LTX. Let's Heck go. yeah. Has anyone reached out to you about like doing something at LTX though? Because we'd love to have you. Um, and we'd love to have both of you there. I know I know you can't necessarily speak for Bob, Bob but yeah, we can take this conversation offline, <laughs> like literally offline, um, and we can chat. Yeah, this is this is awesome. Oh, they had a wall pewter at the first one. Oh, that's right. Cool. Yes. So they have been involved as exhibitors every single time. Ah, oh, I love it. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be LTX without Bob and Rod. Um, okay. Cool. Looking forward to it. Uh, oh, what else? Do, oh, hide image URLs on stream. Okay. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, we're going to have some special designer edition desk pads. What exactly these have to do with LTX? Hard to say, but our designers have been hard at work creating some of the coolest desk pads that you are ever going to see. I'm going to start with Sarah's design. What do you think? These are, I, I've, I've sneak peeked oh, all of them. Oh, you looked at all of them? Dang it, Luke. <laughs> These are actually so sick. Come on, man. I, I really like the, did, did you play Far Cry, uh, what was it? The Blood Whatever. Blood Whatever, yeah. I, I like glanced at it. I didn't really play play it. I should. It gives me, you don't have to play through the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Just like give it like an hour or two. It's fun and then it gets old, but it's, yeah. fu it's, it's, it's fun for the first bit. It reminds me a lot of that, and it's it's great. I so love the colors. I love the like pixelization, the prehistoric yeah. tech. Yeah, you know, and Sarah's a big, big dinosaur lady. I think would be would be one way of putting it. Very cool. Um, so that's one of them. Uh, our the next one to show you guys is uh, from Lloyd, who is one of our one of our longtime designers that many of you will probably have. If you've ever bought anything from LTT Store Dog, let's say this. If you've bought more than one thing from LTTstore.com, there's a solid chance you've worn a Lloyd pen. Okay? Um, so he did a Vancouver Skyline. I think this is cool as specifically potentially a memorabilia piece for Absolutely. LTX itself. Because yep. we're like, I don't know if we're on in frame here. We're going to be here. Okay. Yeah, that is it. Yep. Yeah. So here's the convention center, and then we've got some other iconic uh, elements of the Vancouver the skyline. Super cool. I haven't seen this actually printed yet. I really hope that IRL, it says it's as vibrant and yeah. bold yeah. as uh, as the work that he's done here, but super cool. Um, and then finally, this is... Um, well, a new a new person you'll be meeting. Some of you, if you just like kind of hang around on our corporate website, might know Maria, or you might see her in, uh, you know, shorts or behind the scenes or or stuff like that. But she, aside from just doing our thumbnails, uh, also has some pretty strong design chops. So she put together what she's calling zero gravity gaming, which is just a really fun, uh, vibrant design. Um, that I, man, when I saw this, I, I actually, they didn't tell me who did it and I didn't manage to guess because I confess, I kind of thought of her as the thumbnail person and not as just like, well, cause I don't think, other things. yeah, I, didn't, I don't think we, thumbnails make, yeah, we didn't really hire her as a graphic designer. I mean, sort of cause thumbnails, thumbnails are up, that, but yeah. we yeah. didn't, we didn't intend to, to to have her just like do general design work, like especially not for like merch or whatever, but I think she did an absolutely bang up job. I, I absolutely awesome. love it. Yeah. So the only hard part is going to be figuring out which one to choose. Someone's asking, so are these local only? So you can only get these at LTX? I don't know. They say LTX 2023 on the like image frame. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm super excited though. I'm super excited. They're, they're super cool. Yeah, super sweet. Uh, we should do some merch messages. Dan, hit me. All right. I've got uh, an anonymous one here. Linus and Luke regarding lab funding. Have you thought about trying to secure grants from the government? Consumer research and uh, testing feels like something it might be possible to get grants for. Um, are we doing any shred credit stuff? Not for my team. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure... Not yet, at least. I'm pretty sure there's some stuff that we're doing that is eligible for shred credits, which are like a tax uh, like a tax credit. Um, I know that for some people working on the lab team, because what they're doing is directly uh, involved in video production, uh, we can be eligible for some um, 
uh, production services tax credits. I, I got to be honest with you guys. We are we are not the best when no. it comes to <laughs> optimizing our our tax credits and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think we've actually like I think we've submitted but not collected any going all the way back to like 2018 or 2019. Um, I don't think we've submitted 2021 or 2022. It's not out of laziness. It's just extremely complicated. And I know, I know, I know companies downtown that are smaller than us that have employees on staff, some of them more than one, who their entire full time job, they do nothing else, is to capture government grants. And we don't have anyone that does that. Yeah, it actually takes like a lot of time. Uh, they they make it quite the arduous process. We've Which we've is complained. Stupid. We've complained about this on the show before because it means the people who need it most yes. have the hardest time getting it. Yeah, which is stupid. Yep, we've complained about that in regards to Cavco publicly before, uh, but it's true about all of it. Like it just now people are talking about like loopholes or avoidance this is not loopholes or avoidance this is this is like fi financial aid from the government to support certain industries and if it's there obviously if we're not you sh you should idiots be taking it. Yeah. um we we should take it right like that's it we're not we're, we're not committing fraud these are all things that we're eligible for we just need to <laughs> Be on top of it. <laughs> We've even been told that we're eligible for things before, tried to apply for it, ran into a massive wave of complications, and just been like, yeah. okay, we could get this grant, or we could spend the time that it's going to take for us to deal with these all, all these complications. Just making money. Yes. So every time, almost, not technically, but almost every time, it's just been like, okay, well, I'm just going to go back to work. <laughs> yeah. I hear that. Yeah. It's, uh, anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I've got something to clarify about the desk pads. Oh, yeah. I'm told that they're only going to be available at LTX. Local only. Local only. Ooh, wow. All right. Exclusive. See you guys at LTX. Yeah. I was, uh, I, I told you a while ago that I was reorganizing the stuff. I was going through all of my, like, I can't get rid of this article of clothing because it has significance to me stuff and i found like the ltx 2017 shirt and i found like all this other kind of stuff one that i did get rid of but i always felt conflicted on i just had too much i have this like massive benefit at this point um was the the berry selling shirt nice i still had that and i was like oh, yeah, okay. I, I think go. i can get rid of that one i think that would be a fun like float plane exclusive you and I compare our bins because I have a shirt bin too. I was gonna Sentimental ask you clothing bin. Um, if you still have your your shirt that's the uh, the way like us sitting together in the WAN that logo. If you still have that shirt, because I found the sweater. You have the sweater. I have the sweater. Oh, <laughs> we should do like a, we should do a WAN where you're wearing the shirt, and I'm wearing the sweater. I'm totally down. That'd be bring, sick. We should bring back the design now that we have a t-shirt printer again. Hey, yeah. I'd be I'd be super down. I also have that like super old like christmas sweater that we had the wan christmas sweater oh yeah that thing was crap. And, like all this oh yeah it is but yeah i'm keeping it because it's just like i've kept a lot less of like just old merch because like nick gets mad at me if i wear it <laughs> <laughs> it's like yo people can't even buy that <laughs> like what the f are you doing <laughs> i'm like oh Right. Okay. I guess. I, do, to be, I guess as like the front man, I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to rep the stuff people can currently get, which is honestly fine because it's always it's always forward and upward, right? Like we're trying to make better stuff all the yeah. time, but it's a little bit sentimental, you know. St stuff like that, I don't. I don't plan on wearing. Like the the 2017 shirt. Like I don't want to wear it because I don't want to ever wash it because that that logo like is still in really nice condition. Nice. So I don't. I don't want to trash it. Rod's like I've still got the mod 24 shirt. I do too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saved that one. I know I found it this while I was sorting through. I'm pretty sure it got saved. I, I, I pulled that out and it, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking when you were asking him if he was going to come to the event, I was like, man, we were just roasting NVIDIA for not paying things. But the like one of the very few times that they have mod 24 was actually super sick. They did not pay a lot for it. Nope. <laughs> It was a cool event, regardless. <laughs> Anywho. Moving on. Next one. 
Okay, um, this one's from Elizabeth. Hi, Linus and Luke. I've recently entered my first professional position where I am responsible for delegating to others. Mm. As leaders of your respective teams, how do you balance delegating and perfectionism? Oh. <laughs> I knew that'd get a groan. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. You have to... I mean, it's all training, right? Like, you have to delegate with the assumption that everything they're going to do is wrong. Or, even if it's not wrong, it's definitely not exactly the way you would have done it. But making the mistake could be a valuable thing. Yeah, and so sitting down and talking through how you feel it should have been done can have multiple positive effects. It can help them to reason through it better for themselves next time or conversely it could actually open you up to new perspectives and new approaches which is i think one of our biggest strengths here is that no idea is automatically stupid based on the position of whoever proposed it and that's sort of a complicated way of saying that anyone can have a valid idea for how we can do things better um and so I've had, a let, I've had to let a lot go over the years in terms of perfectionism. Uh, I'm not going to call out anything, in, not anything specific, but like I watched a video recently where I kind of went like in the first two minutes, there were four obvious moments where I was like, well, there should have been a, ob like the thing I was talking about, should, there should have been an image on screen of it. Like what, what there's just supposed to imagine what's the point of this even being a video? Why don't we just upload it as a audio clip yeah uh, like you know little things like that you know obviously i'm you know i can be i can be pretty demanding i can be pretty picky um but the best way to move forward with that is to just have those conversations figure out what the rationale was and then figure out how to best move forward that's the only way you can do it safe answer Mm. <laughs> it's a good one though I don't know, it's fine. the best answer is not an answer up next is from Austin Ooh. Luke uh, what will you play now that Tarkov oh. is not an option uh, honestly I haven't been playing much Still I have to confess that I might have to extend the AMD challenge because I haven't touched my gaming computer <laughs> Gaming is dead. You heard it here I did. first. I, I will say... I've been really busy. <laughs> based on some of the things that have happened, yeah. uh, the, like that we like the, the arrests and the server seizures and all these massive band waves that BSG has been doing, stuff like that, like returning to Tarkov might be fairly realistic fairly soon. I was expecting it was going to be like potentially ever or like at least a year. But it might be a relatively short-term thing for me to return to it. But I've been busy, man. I've been doing other stuff. There's a lot going on in uh, in my life that isn't on Wancho right now. <laughs> so I don't know. I haven't been gaming a ton, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. Back to our last one, uh, AJ in float plane chat. To beat my perfectionism, I just procrastinate until I don't have time to do it perfectly. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> to your, to your boss and your boss's boss. Yeah. Which is, it's taking everything in my power to not say mood right now. Damn it! Oh, God. Oh, no. Damn both these people! <laughs> Same problem! Stop it! We're very alike. No. <laughs> the, see, the trick here is I just give I give AJ too much stuff, so he, he doesn't have, like... He has to work all the time anyways. Oh my gosh. Solution I, I solved. That I don't even want to, I don't want to hear solution that. Solution solved. I don't want to hear any of this solution from solved. any of you. If you tell me to do it within the next hour and it's like a six hour project, then you'll get it in an hour and a half and it'll be good and done. <laughs> That's how Luke manages. It's been going great. <laughs> tell tell him what tell him what you told me earlier about how it's been working under my team. Oh yeah, my, it's very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, but Luke is Luke is turning me into a confident person because um, I, I 
I don't know. I scheduled a meeting. Don't don't say the company, but say the no, no, story. No, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I scheduled a meeting. Like we needed to get this thing done, uh -huh. and uh, I sent an email to the company. Hello, can I please have a meeting with your team? Uh, and they went, uh, yeah. How about Friday? And and then I kind of was in another meeting, freaked out, and went, no, this has to be tomorrow at eleven. Answer my question instead of scheduling a meeting. Uh, and then he went, okay. How about tomorrow at eleven? No, this has to be at eight thirty. We're having this meeting right now. <laughs> Uh, what? And, and then the meeting happened and we got it done and everything's been like full steam ahead. So we I felt like on a, time. Let's go, boys. I, I felt like a big boy man person. <laughs> no, I want I want productivity, please. Give Let's me go. The productivity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, should we I did a business. Should we announce your role change? Uh, I don't really care. Okay. Yeah. So, um Luke is Luke is is, is out as CTO or uh, whatever the heck his role was at Float Play Media, which is a lie because he actually retains that role. But yeah, he's, what? <laughs> he's now <laughs> uh, he's now officially back in the Linus Media Group Inc. fold as our CTO. And he's going to be just kind of unhaphazarding things. Whether it's the, the migration from LastPass or some of our data um, resiliency practices or whether it's our documentation. There's things that he's gotten really good at um, with his team over at Floatplane over the last five years. And, and to be clear to my team over at Floatplane, yeah. nothing is changing there. He worded that really poorly. Well, yeah, I did that on purpose. I know. Everything's fine. <laughs> I know for sure he's going to get at least one phone call tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and and no, I'm not the CTO of Floatplane. I don't think it has one. Yeah, I don't, um, even, I don't even know what your title is. Closest thing to that COO, would probably be right? AJ. Yeah, yeah, COO. Yeah. So, so he's going to be CTO at Linus Media Group to help us take everything that's really good at Floatplane, technology-wise, and also do it here. Because no offense to some of the people who work on some of the tech stuff here. Um, <laughs> no, and okay, I will actually come to their defense specifically. Oh, I know. In my opinion, with the time and the resources that 100%. have been given, it's been amazing what has been accomplished the fact that we have the kind of uptime we do genuinely is a testament to the the work that guys like jake yes and dan yeah. and jamie uh have put in to to have you know like our security system like always works you know like the, things the like fact that, that it's, stuff works at all is it's like, made of duct tape and popsicle sticks but it actually functions yeah which, Which is, is remarkable. Like really good. The, the the problem is that their time is also leveraged in other ways. Yes. Everyone that's been working on it, it hasn't been their main thing. So then they're pulled constantly. They're pulled constantly in other directions. Yeah. And things were, it's been 80-20 ruled, like, on the line for a long time. 20% of the work, 80% of the result. They've lived by that rule, but certain things have been left out, and we're getting to yep. a size, we're getting to a stage where that can't really keep happening. We can't keep doing it. And certain things are starting to fail. Certain edge cases are starting to fail, and they're impacting pretty hard. So yep. hoping to help solve that. Um, this does not mean that you're not going to see like infrastructure tech videos from Jake anymore. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm planning on setting up the system so that you will see exactly as much of that. Maybe actually. more. Actually, maybe, yeah. Because he should be less busy with just like random administrative nonsense. We don't want him to do maintenance stuff. We yeah. don't want him to do documentation. We don't want him to do all these different things. That... We really don't want him to do documentation. <laughs> but he should still be able to have fun and experiment with things and yeah. try things out and then show that on video and, and have that be cool for everyone. So there will not be any less of that. And yeah, the goal is is potentially even more if if he wants to do more. So yeah, that's that's my stance yeah, on it at least. So it's exciting. Hit me, Dan. Okay. Lord um, knows I deserve it today. Yeah, for those comments. Uh, <laughs> this one's from Max. I do my best. This one's from Max. Uh, hey, from Guernsey, where's the weirdest place that you've seen LDT store purchases from? Oh, so I curated this one because oh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal one, uh, which was the, the figure skater. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. That was so sick. Yeah, we our, our water bottle like showed up in an Olympic broadcaster. Yeah. Uh, oh, shoot. What's his name? I um, follow him on Twitter, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I feel like I usually can, but I don't remember right now. Canadian figure. 
I'll find it. I'll find it. Um, mm-hmm. Trying to find... Nope. I'm having a really hard time finding it. Anyway, it was super cool. So I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we sent over uh, uh, a care package. Yeah, yeah, that was that was awesome. Just like seeing the water bottle out in the wild, like just casually supporting an elite athlete, you know, keeping him hydrated. Uh, that was super cool. All right, hit me with another Dan. I think it's like I'll find it. Linus and Luke. Oh, wait. This one, oh, oh we, curated one on top of it. we did this one, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, long time watcher, first time purchaser, commenter. I was thinking about beds last night. And okay. <laughs> Me too. As did you. Uh, what cool bed tech would you like to see? Are you a holographic screen? Roman Sadovsky. I thought it was Sarovsky, and I couldn't quite find it. Ah. Roman Sadovsky. Sorry, I, that was really rude. What, be what bed tech would you like to see? Uh, I mean, you've got a cool bed now. Yeah. Didn't you do it? I thought you were going to do it. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm using it. I don't know that I like it as much as you do. Oh. So we're we're both playing around with the sleep eight or eight sleep. Eight sleep. The eight sleep. Um, I kind of find that it's either um, like when I have it on. Okay, both of us run pretty warm at night compared to our SOs. And I kind of find that. Oh, Dan was muted. Okay. I'm Basically, aware. bed tech ideas. Yeah. I find that it's either really warm. Okay, how do I put this? I don't really like to just stay on one side of the bed a lot. <laughs> what? I'm a cuddler. So because Yvonne runs her side with the heater, <laughs> what ha ends up happening is if I move around in the night, I'm either boiling because I'm like over the threshold to her side, or I'm freezing because I got all sweaty on her side and I'm on my <laughs> chilled side. <laughs> And I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm not really liking it that much. But I also don't have the subscription. So, I, it, so, so their function oh, where it's supposed the to thing. keep you at the right temperature all the time doesn't work. You just have to set this like super coarse adjustment for like a, like, a, like a curve to be cooler in the middle of the night apparently or something like that. And it's not great. But I'm not, I'm not paying a subscription fee for a $3,000 mattress topper. That's absurd. So I just... It's got to knock to a fan, bro. It does. Like, oh, that's the thing. Maybe, and maybe it's worth it. Like, maybe maybe by that time... Have you looked it, into the specs of the actual computer that, like, runs it? Yeah, it's, like, it's actually... Like surprisingly, like, oh, wow. Yeah, but I already bought the computer. Yeah. I just, I find it so offensive. No, I hear you. But, like, okay, it's not like there aren't subscription services that I do pay for. I pay for, like, uh, Nabucasa. The, the home home assistant cloud oh, subscription yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not even the only way to do that you can work around it with your own thing but it's just uh it's way more convenient it's like five dollars a month or something like that and honestly for the bed maybe i maybe i just should because it would be more comfortable or whatever but like i mean you've been pretty happy with it i think i've had i've had a good experience um i find ac off is now like tolerable it doesn't completely solve it for me because even with so it's minimum possible temperature is is negative 10 degrees is it actually running at that i don't think so mm. but it feels pretty cold but i am a a big boy and i am running very hot so it'll <laughs> it'll get into a situation where like my if i'm laying on my back my like back will be a nice temperature but my like chest is roasting yes because it's not enough to like yeah. get all the way through me so you need a cooled blanket too I need a cooled like which everything. would be inherently weighted, and weighted blankets are apparently That'd really good. Sweet. So you need a cooled weighted blanket. My, my LTGstore.com next project. Kyle, are you watching? Let's go. <laughs> the thing right now that has made it so I get just like actually amazing sleeps is when it's so hot that we need to turn the AC on, mm. and then I can bundle a bit and take like yeah. instead of the thinnest blanket I've ever found yeah. on the market, which is what I normally sleep with, I can actually have like a thicker blanket on and I have the eight sleep at the lowest temperature it can possibly go and the AC on, then I'm like, oh, wow, I am a, I am a cozy boy. And then I sleep super, super well and I feel very rejuvenated in the morning. Ooh, it Tynan's isn't, in the chat. It isn't quite enough just on its own. Um, but it helps. It, it So... It's way better with it for me 
Yeah. But it's not 100% of what I could hope for, if that makes sense. But I, I still like it. I wouldn't recommend it for everyone because it's really expensive. It's really expensive. But, like, it does help me. And other stuff, I don't know. If anything could magically cure my insomnia, I'd be down for that. Like, I don't need another device to tell me yeah. you had a terrible f***ing sleep last night. It's like, yeah, thanks. Yep. <laughs> All right, what's next? Yep. All right, let's have a look. Oh, my goodness. The merch messages are coming in too fast for poor Dan to read them to us and also curate and reply to them. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm not ready for, for I'm doing other things. Um, this one's from Maxwell. Um, hey, Luke. A couple of wands ago, you mentioned a viewer in Antarctica. Sorry, that was me. I work in McMurdo, a U.S. station. I was wondering what hey. you guys had to do to make the surface work better. 100% honestly, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure AJ's watching. Yeah, AJ's in the chat, so maybe AJ remembers, because I'm pretty sure that AJ did it and Luke just supervised. Probably. That was a long time ago, so... That was when AJ was doing literally all of our infrastructure, so... Yeah. I mean, that, he did that for a long time. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Look, I was trying to make us sound like a real company, Luke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so maybe uh, maybe AJ will get back to us in the float plane chat, or maybe AJ doesn't have to be working right now because it's late, but whatever. Yeah, I don't 100% know that he's still around. I, ju I yeah. think he is. Okay, um, it just wouldn't surprise me. Next up is from Kyle. With Ring being on the outs, what is your recommendations for home security and surveillance? Um, I'm really happy with my Ubiquiti stuff. I, it's tough, though, because obviously it's easy for me to say when Ubiquiti is a, is a longtime collaborator of ours and sends us a lot of the stuff that we need from them. It's really expensive, especially for home use. So it's tough, right? There was that... Um, Man, what was that? Uh, Wise. There was that uh, that cheap brand that everyone loved for a while, and then they started locking things down. So it like apparently sucks now. I have I haven't completely looked into it. We did a we did a video on like a DIY solution back in the day. Jake Jake did something up, and it was like uh, it was like a, a Pi Zero like DIY security camera thing. Something like that could obviously work. There's yeah there. I don't know. Maybe this is something that we just need to really dig into and do a video. I know I'm off topic, but I I am just so happy that Antarctica guy is still subscribed. That's actually so <laughs> sick. <laughs> well, you don't actually know that. Um, That's fair. Antarctica guy is not actually in the float plane chat. It that was, was a merge message. message. Yes. Yeah. So maybe uh, he's still around in some way. Good okay. Uh, AJ says we had a VM with a specific host at the time where we did pretty much all our CDN things. Okay, that's a really vague posty explanation. Thank you for that, AJ. <laughs> it was a server. Probably we just put an edge node closer on a route that was good for getting there. Probably. Thanks, Captain Probably. <laughs> I asked Captain Actually Knows. I'm sorry it's late. That's fair. <laughs> Go. Yeah, it's what. What is? Go. Yeah. Go to bed. Uh -huh. Exactly that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's what I said. I was like ninety nine percent sure from the beginning, but I didn't know a hundred percent because it's been a bajillion years. So we're yeah. not shipping anything to Antarctica, Jaden. <laughs> All right, Dan, hit me. <laughs> Speaking of shipping, this one's from Cody. What type of food would you sell on LDT store if shipping food internationally wasn't a terrible idea? <laughs> CBD gummies. There's great margin. Is there? Probably. Yeah, I actually had a, a former colleague from NCIX who wanted to start up like a like a partnership doing like like alertness gamer CBD gummies and stuff like that. And they, they sent me over some of the products it actually like seemed really good. I actually really liked it. The sleep one was not bad. Um, not a perfect solution. I still do struggle to sleep sometimes, but definitely better than nothing, which is about all you can really ask for when it comes to like supplements and stuff. I don't know if there's just like a lot of margin in it or what's going on, but it seems like every single like fitness influencer person sells their own protein powder. Yeah. Good margin. That's it. Cause it's, it's, it's like, gotta be what's it's going like on. nothing. It's what like ground up snail shells or whatever. Right. Like it's worthless. It's, it's way. Yeah. It's just way. Yeah. I, 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 no, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were legitimately no, correcting me because no, no, no. you thought I thought that yeah, it was actually yeah. made of that. I love um, how you you mix. I let you pour it into milk. So you're just pouring like a, a milk, like a 
part of milk into more actual milk and then you drink that. <laughs> yeah, so milk. It's mil you're drinking like hyper milk. <laughs> <laughs> more milk per milk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's basically what's happening. Or energy powder. Yeah, they all have their own, like, pre-workout, creatine, which is the same thing, uh, protein powder, whatever. They all have their own, like, yeah. range of supplement stuff. It's because you can just find an OEM that Brand makes it. it, just slap a label on it, and it's the simplest thing ever. And so he had a relationship that he was forging with, like, a big manufacturer of, of CBD gummies. And he was like, you know, go for it. If it's good enough for Martha Stewart, it's good enough for you. You probably, based on what I just said, probably know who this was. I knew it was from the beginning. Oh, of okay, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Um, but my my hesitations were twofold. Um, you know, one was I had a lot of concern about even even if I don't give a rat's patoot about CBD or weed or whatever. There's a lot of uptight people out there, and it's one of those spaces that, as a as a loosely regulated industry, there's just a lot of like crap going on a lot of shady stuff a lot yeah. of shady people are involved yeah. and i just i don't need the association number two is i've always been extremely hesitant about anything that people ingest yeah i yeah. thought frankly speaking i thought mr beast was absolutely bat shit crazy beast burger. beast burger yeah and then he did the these like stuff too these like random well the chocolate one i don't even mind as much because at least it's coming from presumably some kind of factory that actually has some kind of actual safety protocols but in all place. these ghost kitchens. but all these like random ghost kitchens with like lord only knows how long these things are sitting on a warmer before they get delivered like i i, I don't know I promise you, he doesn't know. Yeah. And it only takes as far, like, depending on how your company is set up, it only takes one person to, like, f***ing die for the whole thing to come crumbling down. So anything that people ingest, I've just, I've just been very sketched out by. It's possible we'll do, like, gamer <clears throat> snacks or something at some point, but it just hasn't, hasn't happened. Yeah. Okay, I've got another one here from Joshua. Linus, has your wife vetoed any ideas or purchases you still want to make? If so, what were they? Um, she's pretty permissive. I was going to say, doesn't really do that that much. Yeah, like we had this, we had a concept a while back where we were going to buy. She'll be very like, disappointed. Yeah, we were going to buy a sex doll for like a channel super fun or something. It was like $12,000 or something like that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why we didn't do it because we found out the price. Oh, okay. But she wasn't the obstacle. Like she's, uh, yeah, she's, she's, pr she's pretty chill. Like she's, okay, what's great about Yvonne is that she... <laughs> she lets you buy sex dolls? <laughs> I mean... It's pretty reasonably priced. Is that not great? That, at that price, they're very realistic. So I I've bet. heard. I so bet. I've heard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she's, she's, she's a great... Um, Enable. Enab yeah. Yeah. She she will she will try to talk you down off of the branch, but if you insist on climbing more or jumping or swinging from it or doing whatever stupid thing it is, she'll that try to help you do it the best. She'll way. try and make sure you don't get hurt. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. her. That's her thing. Um. Yeah. So I can't think of anything that she's really vetoed. I think if she could go back in time, she would veto the smart light switches. But <laughs> other than that, we don't disagree about that much. Yeah. All right, hit me. Okay, next one's up from Michael. My friends and I use the dollar per hour ratio to judge game value. You've both spoken about how you don't care for MTX or cosmetics. One of our group <sighs> has spent 2,400 US dollars in Fortnite, but with 5,000 hours. Thoughts? I have lots of thoughts. <laughs> 5,000 hours in Fortnite. Yeah, that was where Damn. I went first. Is that is that in-game or does that include menus? Do you, I mean, it would include you, menus probably. Some games don't. Oh, okay. Most um, games do, but this isn't like a Steam tracked game, right? Steam counts menus, I know that. Yeah. Um... Woof. <laughs> That's a lot of hours in Fortnite. <laughs> We're still on that. <laughs> That's also just a lot of money. What is, is, is yeah, you didn't have to spend that money. You could have yeah. also gotten 5,000 hours in Fortnite 
and, and not, not spent, spent that. that money. Yeah. And I, then the dollar per hour ratio would be even lower, which would be even better. I am I am down with supporting things that you use a lot. Like I remember I got Rocket I've told this on the show before. I got Rocket League on some crazy sale for like three bucks or something. And then I've just played the heck out of it. So I bought a couple seasons passes or something. Yeah. I'm sure my total in on that. Not that much. Probably like less than 50 bucks. Okay. And I played a ton of it. Let's talk about World of Warcraft. Okay. You've probably spent more than $2,400 on WoW. It was like 50 bucks a month back in the day, if I recall correctly. Wasn't it? Oh, no. It was 50 bucks to buy the thing. Okay. With all the expansions, though, are you sure? It's 15. 15 a a month. month. Okay. So that's almost $200 a year. I bet you're close. To to five thousand? No, no, two point four. Oh. Fifteen times. Let's say that. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone here, sir. <laughs> I promise you I have never spent two thousand dollars on a oh wait, hold on. How much did I spend on Star Citizen? No, I have never spent two thousand dollars on a committed video game. to though. Yeah. If it actually ever comes out, you're gonna have a big bill. Okay, that's true. <laughs> For a ship that is hopefully good. Who knows? Yeah, I guess we'll see. Um Okay, but one of the things, my brother and I shared an account for like literally mm-hmm. the majority of the time that I played the game. Okay. And then another significant portion of me playing the game was definitely private servers, which you don't pay for monthly. I see. <laughs> I just think, I think you're not that far off, probably. 15 times 12 is 180. Yeah. So let's say I played for four years. Is that it? I don't know. Because I played... Because I thought you played for a long time. Classic. Yeah. I played like... Three quarters of... I never played consistently. I played three quarters of Classic. I played like half to three quarters of Burning Crusade. I played one quarter of Wrath. Okay. And then I never played consistently again until Classic came out again. Hmm. But I am pretty sure I got like almost every expansion. But I never... I very rarely got them right away. I would get them when they were like basically free right before the next one came out. Sure. We get it. You're a cheapskate. Yeah. But my point stands. <laughs> when you compare I've spent a bunch on games. Yeah. yeah, when you compare this ratio to something like a wow, does it actually seem that outlandish? I don't know. I think it depends how much you play each month. Subscription model game. Does it need to be a subscription model game for the amount of content you get versus the content cycling that Fortnite does go through? Yeah, they 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 do innovate they a lot do big map changes they yep. do things like i mean i'm not necessarily interested in it but you can turn into like the hulk or something i don't remember i don't know who cares yeah you can turn into like ariana grande i think sure like, I yeah know. i have no idea <laughs> so yeah i don't know um it doesn't seem right to me Okay. But if the math's there and they're fulfilled, like, I don't really care what they do with their own personal money. You do whatever you want. All right. Okay. All right, Dan, hit us. Okay. Next up is from Christopher. Honest question. What is the goal of Right to Repair? I have been buying replacement parts and repairing my electronics since I broke an iPhone uh, iPhone 3G ages ago. Uh, have I not had the right to repair? I don't really understand your question. What? Um, the goal of right to repair is that the ability to repair your device is a right, and more so that your ability to do that, your right to repair it, cannot be impeded by other parties. So... The fact that you have been able to get replacement parts for your electronics since you broke your iPhone 3G ages ago um, is not for their lack of trying to make those replacement parts impossible or inordinately expensive to get. You've been lucky and you should be thankful to the right to repair advocates and crusaders that are out there pushing for this um, because without them, No, companies like Apple would absolutely restrict your ability to get any of that stuff. Uh, They would want you to come to them for first party repairs or they would want to sell you a new device. So right to repair is what you're talking about. 
except it is establishing it as a right. It's establishing that you actually have ownership of the things that you have bought and that they are, no, not in fact, still the property of the company that produced them. Um, if you do not, if you do not sort of, hmm, if right to repair is not a priority for you, or you don't think that it's important, you do not understand it. It's, it really is very black and white. This is, there's, there's not any room for negotiation or nuance on this. The solutions for how we, uh, how we enforce the consumer's right to repair, well, that's where there's room for discussion. But the actual right to repair, to, to own devices that you pay for, um, that's not negotiable. And if you disagree, then you're just wrong, unfortunately. And you need to educate yourself um, because the people who do disagree will, will put up all kinds of just, frankly, ridiculous arguments like, well, what if I don't want to? What if I want Apple to repair? Then by all means, go do it. The right for someone else to repair a device themselves does not infringe upon your right to pay someone too much money for them to do it, or even a reasonable amount of money for them to do it. I mean, everyone has different priorities. Not everybody wants to tinker with their stupid phone. I get it. But just because you don't means you need to sit down, shut your mouth, and let everyone else do their thing. That's all. Very simple. All right. Okay, uh, up next we have Kyler. Over the years, we've seen tech have the infamous planned obsolescence. What tech equipment would you say has no excuse to be going bad in only a handful of years? I'm really tired of phones just like turning into complete suck. I mean, I'm pretty sure that my dad, when I was growing up, had had his rotary phone for like 20 years. I mean, it was like yellowed enough, like the plastics were. But it still worked. But yeah, but everything still worked. I mean, yeah, it's, um, I, I hate the disposability of these things. I think about this when I get rid of certain things, actually, because if there's like a new shiny thing on the market that I want and I'm replacing something that I have, yes, everyone's going to call me cheap. I, I think about like the amount of issues that I might have of, with it, with the new thing as it gets into its obsolescent period, its planned obsolescent period. And I'm like, Ooh, the thing that I have right now works. Do I want to just keep that? Maybe. <laughs> Depends. Depends on the thing. Depends on how impacted it is. Phones, it gets a little bit too painful. You kind of got to move on. Batteries aren't replaceable. Your battery running out of total capacity gets really, really frustrating. Yep. Certain apps aren't going to work as well. You run out of software updates, stuff like that. You kind of got to do it at a certain degree. I've been running on this one for a while. It's still fine right now, but it'll run out of its. I'm going to go with earphones. Hmm. Audio devices are something that for decades we've been able to count on to yeah, be pretty can't. decent 10 years after you bought them, as long as you invested in a good one, like a good quality one. Whereas now, you buy a pair of earphones with the expectation that in three to five years, it will be actual e-waste. Do you think that's why the headphone jack went away? To make earphones a consumable? I like to not wear my tinfoil hat so loud and proud as all that. But, um, I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes I can't tell the difference between 4D chess and just... Um, design first like i just I, I i don't know i don't know but i i don't know i maybe <laughs> i mean maybe buds but like the kinds of headphones we're wearing now you know some of those I do think, last I for think decades they're still doing oh yeah these do well. which is yeah. like yeah. yeah but that's the precedent for it right like i expect mm. i mean these are not great. maybe not these ones yeah not these ones these are just my affordable. my 595s i've i'm on i don't even know how many times i've replaced the ear pads but I just keep replacing the AirPods. They're fantastic headphones. I hope I, I never think. have to stop using them. I'm on year 15 with mine, and I haven't even replaced the AirPods. They're yeah. like still going strong. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Next. They, they're leather. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I thought uh, you had 595s. <laughs> no. you just no, said mine, I'm, and I was like, that's gross. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, good God. Uh, okay. Uh, next, uh, we've got Alex. Uh, have you ever thought about getting into fragrances? Yes. I want to re-experience that new PC smell. Yeah. I want a magic blue smoke fragrance. 
Oh, God, no. <laughs> that gives me so much anxiety. If you could just dab a little bit of magic blue smoke on the wrists, man, just, ah. Oh. And new electronics. Up. I'd love a new electronics fragrance. Oh, I don't want to smell any of these burnt things. Burnt plastic. Yeah, <laughs> oh, burnt plastic. Ah, I love it. Gross. Okay. Um, okay, last of the curated. Uh, this is from Antoine. What would be, sorry, one um, second. What would be funny is if for April Fool's events for LTT store, is if you guys made, like, actually made, like, joke products, but you actually made them and actually shipped them to people. <laughs> Luke, why do you enable him? Because <laughs> it's awesome. Because sometimes he'll follow through with stuff that I think is hilarious and it's great. Um, I'm not telling you to not. Because <laughs> I was thinking the other day about, I haven't heard about Cards Against Humanity in a long time. But they used to do stuff like that. They would basically like troll their yeah. customers. But they would be transparent about it. They'd be like, you're buying this thing. And people would be like, huh, no way. There's no way they'd ship that to me. And then they actually do it. I just, I like that. I mean, D-Brand like does that sort of thing too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's, not, it's not unheard of. It is definitely actually a thing. It's a lot of work developing a product that's actually good. I don't like manufacturing garbage. Like I yeah. don't like manufactured waste. So... I have tended away from anything that's just LOL. Um, that's what that's that's what I will say about that's that. That's fair. Yeah, that is fair. Okay, last of the curated from Antoine. I've been watching the weekly news analysis, uh, open nice. parentheses, lol, close parentheses, show <laughs> religiously for about six to seven years now. How do you guys deal with crazy people who know you as I do without having met you? I think we're just kind of used to it. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, it's like... There's been times where it was bad, but they're usually very contained and you get over it. Yeah, it's it's overall pretty cool. Like, yeah. it's... um. It's always a nice... I, I always liked the status flex. Like, back when, back when I was in uh, dating phases, if you're out on a date with someone and someone comes up to you and like, oh, hey, whatever, it's great. I would always like... I would notice someone looking at me and be like that... That person knows who I am. And I'd so be tell like, me, come on. But is it effective? Yeah. <laughs> Not as effective as chicken, apparently. <laughs> hey, they're both effective. Okay. Yeah, hit them with both of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we don't hit anyone with chicken, okay? That's get, not okay, Dan. You get salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> no, chickenella. I said chicken, not salmon. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm yeah. so bad at this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Last curated? Oh no, that no, was that it. That was the curated. Then we're on to the potentials. We're on the potentials now. Do you want should me we... to read the potentials and you can keep working on incoming? Should we just go for it? Yeah. This freaks asks, Linus, can you sell things that are already waste? For example, the high school I went to demolished a couple of years ago. They were selling bricks to alumni. Uh, yeah, that's something we actually do want to do more of is turning e-waste into um, like decorative items. Uh, we've been, man, it's been like over a year, which is sort of embarrassing, but we've wanted to do uh, you could do the explodey boxes. Yeah, we could. Those are a lot of work. We're trying to figure out things that are relatively scalable because unless you're actually repurposing, you know, many pounds of electronics, uh, are you doing anything? I don't know. And I mean, it's all just delaying the inevitable, and I understand that. But we're looking for things that are reasonably scalable. So one of the ideas we had is um, like acrylic. Uh, co or like resin coasters with CPUs embedded in them. Uh, so that's something we've been trying to perfect for over a year. Oh. Not full time, obviously. Just been on the been on the table. It's a project that's been kind of handed off first from I think. Who was the first person to touch it? I think Kyle might have done something with it, and then Tynan was on it, and then I think one of the new engineers who might still be on probation was on it. Um, Jacob might have looked at it at some point when he was here. The point is, a lot of people have kind of chipped away at it, but we haven't figured out exactly how to make sure the bottom doesn't end up concave. Uh, we haven't figured out how to make sure that whatever, like the acrylic that we machine out the spot for is exactly the same tone and fades in exactly the same way as the resin that we put in it, getting all the bubbles out of the resin. There's actually a lot involved in just... The stupidest bullshit sometimes, you know? Like, it seems easy. Yeah, I just put a CPU in resin, but what if the CPU goes too deep into the resin and it pokes through the top? 
Well, that doesn't look very nice. Well, okay, you could put a thing in there to keep it from going into. How did they deep. used to do the old school keychains? I don't know. Was that resin or was that like a plastic case? I'm not sure. I don't remember. It's a good question. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> it just takes time. <laughs> so you guys are on it now for the potentials. Oh, Unless yeah, you sure. Unless you want me to just start oh, no. going through them. Uh, okay, uh, I, I can do potentials. Okay. Uh, Samuel says, hopefully this jacket is worth $250. My question is, do you guys have any thoughts on hydrogen fuel cell? I would love to see hydrogen fuel cell succeed. From what I can tell, it's far less impactful in terms of mining rare earth metals than what we're doing right now. With that said, um, Tesla did show off some very promising slides um, at their last tech day uh, to do with reducing the, I believe it was nickel and cobalt um, contents of their batteries. So, you know, who knows? If batteries get less reliant, on heavy metals, if batteries get more recyclable, like if we could take a dead lithium battery and get back you know, 80, 90 plus percent of the lithium and turn it back into a working battery, I'd love to see that. Um, but otherwise, I mean, hydrogen fuel cell, aside from just being kind of stalled right now in terms of at least what I'm seeing as a general consumer, it's not an industry that I follow super closely. Um, so I'd love for it to work there. That's what I'll say about it. I just, there's so much momentum for electric charging now and so little momentum for hydrogen fuel cell fueling stations. I just, uh, I don't have a lot of hope. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Oh, right. I'm supposed to be doing this. Uh, uh, Linus, seeing uh, as you seemed to enjoy playing Horizon Call of the Mountain on PSVR 2, do you think you might give Horizon Zero Dawn another try? I finished Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, I, yeah, I loved Horizon I Zero Dawn. Have. Yeah, it's a great game. Yeah, it's a really good game. If you haven't played it, it's 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 awesome. Yeah. Uh, I played through it on the um, on the Steam Deck. The only issue I had was related to running it on the Steam Deck and it being in its very early days and some sort of weird crashing and bugginess and stuff like that. No, a really great game. Really enjoyed it. Um, currently watching March 3rd WAN show, High Future Me. Oh, you're behind. I see. Uh, Linus and Luke and Dan, what has been your favorite date with your respective SOs? Why? And do you think they would pick the same? If you guys aren't ready, I can go first. I have something in mind, but okay. Um, probably the most fun date that Yvonne and I went on, at least in the last five years, uh, was we did something called a discovery flight at a flight school at the local airfield. It was shockingly affordable. Did you guys ever do it? No. Do it. Way to spoil that. It's not like Emma watches the WAN show. Yeah, she does. Oh. You know what? No, I'm not accepting any responsibility for this. I told him like a year ago. There. Yeah, because it was my idea because I asked you to go. Was it? Yeah. Oh. And then you just did it without me. <laughs> okay, I guess we're airing some dirty laundry today. <laughs> well, it was a really good idea. Thanks. <laughs> so it's shockingly affordable. It was like $130 or something like that. We're up for, it was like two hours or oh. something all told. I guess technically I didn't ask if you want to do the discovery flight. Oh, I asked okay. if you wanted to like do the whole thing. Oh yeah, and I'm still I'm still down. Yeah. I'm still yeah, down. Yeah. But anyway, uh, it was like $160. It was shockingly affordable. Yeah. Both Yvonne and I got to operate the aircraft with a certified instructor in the in the plane with yeah, you us. You like both have a yoke. It's like actually pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was an absolute blast. And it was it was probably the best like bang for the buck sort of premium date experience that I've ever had in terms of like memorability and an actual like mm -hmm. like f like fun factor way better value than going to the movies like maybe less time but awesome ops awesome ton of fun I I don't know but there was one that I remembered that was I doubt she would pick the same one, but I do know that she remembers this event rather fondly. We were supposed to go up to a particular lake. I don't remember the name of it. Um, Harrison Lake, I think, was mm -hmm. the one. 
It's just been a few years. So I don't remember which one it was. Um, and we were supposed to go to a particular spot on it. And I was, I don't remember if I was using my car's GPS or Google Maps or whatever one it was. It just didn't send us to the right spot at all. And I had never been there before. So we ended up on like some logging road, like halfway up the lake until looking to my left, I noticed through the trees that we were clearly on the side of the lake and we were supposed to be approaching like the bottom of the lake and stopping right there. So I knew we were way off of where we were supposed to be. And that's why we had to turn around and go all the way back. We ended up being super late to the event that we were trying to go to. And then afterwards, we stayed at this Airbnb out there back when Airbnb was cool, which was like nowhere close to the town <laughs> that we were <laughs> visiting. But I picked it because it was like this really sick, like old school farmstead as an airbnb oh that's cool so it was like it was this really cool event. taking my acura onto a logging road was an event in its own right um that was the day that i was like basically had to be like all right i'm not as worried about keeping this car pristine anymore <laughs> so I'm like cruising down a gravel logging road with rocks flying all over the place and i was like okay um <laughs> nice but yeah it was it was Cool because I have always liked uh, going through things like that with people. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that as a bond strengthener. When you're able to go through some like, this kind of sucks. We have no idea where the heck we are. We're like up in the mountains. We're not supposed to be up in the mountains. We got to figure out where we're going. We got to do this thing. And then we're doing some weird thing afterwards. And you make it through and everyone has a good time and it's fun. That's always like a bond strengthening thing for me. I always like those times. So that was that was a good one. Super cool. Oh right, I'm supposed to do this. Gosh darn it! Sorry, Sorry I'm I'm going through and I'm trying to I'm trying to reply to them right now and stuff too. So I'm uh, trying to trying to help Dan. Um, There's only one in incoming. Michael asks, given survivor bias, do you have any estimate on how many people have failed where you have succeeded in your business space? Oh, literally that, tens of thousands. Oceans, yeah. Um, do you have any anonymous anecdotes on what mistakes not to make? I think the biggest mistake, the, the biggest mistakes you can make are not being true to yourself and not listening to your audience. And on the surface, those might seem contradictory because how can you be true to yourself and listen to your audience? And how can you listen to your audience while being true to yourself? But they actually work together because if you stay true to yourself, you should build an audience that will actually encourage you to stay on a path that is true to yourself while also being to their interests. That's how you build a community of like-minded people. And, and that's you, what I think we've done really well. And you also shouldn't, you shouldn't be 100% rigid in every single thing ever. So your audience might have good ideas and might have good feedback. And that doesn't mean you have to listen to all of it, but you should listen to some of it so you can grow and improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Jason says, getting the WAN desk pad for a new setup. Two systems in the DK05F. Sick setup. I was wondering if you could say anything more on yours and Alex's experience building in it that didn't get into the video. That's a better question for Alex. You might want to like tweet at him or something because I don't think I did much on that video. Uh, sometimes I am, I am deeply involved and other times I am quite a bit less involved in the actual building of the system. I think Jake might have had a hand in that one as well. Um, yeah, that thing is super cool, but also not necessarily the most practical, which I'm sure you are well enough aware. Um, Gavin says, hey, Luke, after the issues with Tarkov, have you picked up any other games to play in its place? Uh, I sort of answered this earlier as oh. well, but like, no. Um, I, oh, that's I, right. I think it's a different person Okay, asking. what would it be? Like what would what what's your alternative? So they're saying they play Hunt Showdown. I've looked into Hunt Showdown. I'm not that into it. Um, what's the difference? I think it's a similar type of game, in in a few different ways. But it's like, if I, man, the last time I played it was many years ago. If I remember correctly, it's like it has like a horror base as well, and there's like, giant spiders and zombies and stuff that you're fighting off at the same time, and it's just not really. Oh, okay. My vibe. It has some similarities, but it's a very different game. P some The community that likes that game is really into it. So, like, it, if you want to try it, like, don't let me dissuade you. Uh, it's just not for me, personally. Uh, I've tried a few other games in the space, too. I've tried Arma. I've tried a bunch of other things. None of it really hits. I don't know. 
I guess if it doesn't have that same depth to the to the simness of it. And you could argue that Arma does in a bunch of different ways, but then some people are gonna like this. I find Arma to be very clunky. I'm not a huge fan of the controls and stuff. Right. Um, I don't know. It's just Tarkov just needs to figure it out. <laughs> That's basically it. D'Artagnan M. I understand how unlikely this is, but I wanted to know if Linus thinks LMG might ever be in a position to hire truck drivers. Sincerely, a truck driver named Zeus. Zeus. Love it, by Sick the way. Name. Um I don't know. I mean, if LCIX ever takes off and we become like a, you know, giant tech retailer or something obviously we'd need truck drivers for that but there's a future where it could happen yeah but i i kind of doubt it i don't know if we're ever gonna i don't know if we're ever gonna make it to that future we would probably use another service that ha they happen to hire truck drivers i feel like i don't know yeah maybe maybe um anonymous asks what made you choose the Taycan over one of the e-hybrid models from porsche you've strongly advocated for hybrids in the past i'm looking at getting a used cayenne e-hybrid curious on your thoughts i'm gonna be honest with you i hate going to the gas station it's one of those things that just makes me irrationally annoyed when i have to stop and get gas i I like going straight from where I am to where I want to be, and I don't like stopping. I'm just like a, I'm like a go, go, go kind of person, and I want to never go to the gas station again. And so the Taycan is really great for that. Um, I also don't want an SUV. I don't, I, don't, I don't enjoy the SUV driving experience. With that said, I've never driven a Cayenne. Maybe it's like not very SUV-like. Maybe it's awesome. But I, I like being low to the ground. I've always preferred to be low to the ground. I'm, yeah. I'm really happy with it so far. I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever, no matter how stupid some of my badminton buddies think I am. One of them has like an i8, I think it is, whatever that BMW hybrid one yeah. is. Well, that's the like supercar thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks sick. Uh, very, very striking looking car uh, with like the, 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 the doors like this. Not like this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, right. I'm st supposed yeah. to keep doing things. I'm sending that one to Tynan. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, for Linus, have there been any discussions about offering blank tees to creators like Goat to put their designs on? I mean, absolutely. It's something Creator Warehouse would love to get into. Uh, it's kind of where the name like came from in the first place. There's a reason we just didn't just call it Linus Tech Tips Merch Company. <laughs> Um, but it's, thank goodness, there's a lot of logistics to figure out. You know, you have to, you have to build those relationships. You have to, you know, build trust with creators. Uh, we had one fairly prominent creator recently that we were even working on some custom products for, but, um, just kind of stopped replying to emails. Um, I, I don't, I'd love to know what the problem was. Cause we actually went as far as getting samples in and trying to book a time with this person to show them to them so that they could tell us if they were good and then we could you know do a size run and like like we were working on some full custom projects and just uh just kind of disappeared and um since since then this uh this person has launched a merch lineup through another company and it's kind of like okay well it would have been nice to not read about that in the news maybe but um you know hey good luck on the launch and then i just never heard back and so i'm kind of Wondering if maybe some messages got lost or something, because that's sort of the only the only real thing I can think of. Yeah. But yeah, stuff happens, right? Like life happens, business happens, and I'm not I'm not taking it personally or anything. The point of telling the story was just that it can be very challenging. Um, so yeah, we'd we'd love to, but one of the issues I think with our with our model is that you kind of have to bet big on things, even for blank T-shirts. No printing company that has decent quality is going to print 30 shirts for you. Like, that's stupid. That's not even worth them setting up the screen printing. So unless you're going to print hundreds of shirts, um, I, don't even know, I don't even know if we can help you, right? And if you're going to print hundreds of shirts and you don't sell them, then... I don't know. We'd have to have some kind of system for passing through storage costs or something. Like, I, I I don't know. There's there'd be funky. a lot of things to we figure, figure out. It out. Yeah. yeah. I do know that there is a company out there uh, 
that I was planning on talking to you about next week, and we're not going to fully talk about now. Uh, but they do merch stuff, and they have they have uh, been inspired by the work of merch messages. Oh, really? I'll refrain from saying copied, but oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yep. Um, I mean, hey, it's nice to be an innovator, right? Yeah. Good job, Conrad. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Edris says, The 3DS and Wii U eShop are closing, and access to games there is ending. I've been buying games I wasn't able to get since I still enjoy my 3DS. Were there any games that you enjoyed on them? I never had a Wii U, and I never had a 3DS. You borrowed my 2DS, because I was cheap. Uh, to play uh, Bravely Default. Yes, I did. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I played Bravely Default, and that was um, okay. <laughs> yeah. There are better retro RPG-inspired games now, and Bravely Default 2, I finished it, but I like kind of forced myself to do it. The deal for that yeah uh was he was like yeah it's gonna like take me a while so be aware of that but i'm gonna buy bravely default and if you're down i'll borrow your 2ds and then you can just have the game when i'm done and i was like uh yeah sure and then when you gave it back you were like i don't know if i'd bother play it <laughs> so i i still have the bravely default cartridge and have still never actually played it because i was just like yeah you right. should play final fantasy tactics yeah yeah or, or you could play my all-time favorite, Final Fantasy VI. Like, he still hasn't played it. <sighs> Have you watched? This would take significantly I know, less I time. I haven't watched this Pirates of Silicon significantly Valley. I haven't less watched time. Pirates of Silicon Valley. Like, many hours less. I know. Okay, if I watch Pirates of Silicon Valley, you'll play Final Fantasy VI. That is not an even trade. I but... Mean, oh! Speaking of... But, sure. Speaking of terrible deals... Okay, I still don't know if it's okay for the birds. I'm trying to figure it out. It's a hard, it's a, it's not a like easy answer to grab. Okay. He is, he is getting a new computer and a NAS upgrade, but all he has to do is have it be mineral oil cooled or well, a new fluid, yeah. a new not mineral oil fluid. Yeah. My, my problem Submersion cooled. is I have two small birds and there are a lot of different things like that that are extremely critically unsafe. Uh, like we'll kill them very quickly type of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different chemicals that you have to stop using in your home. If you, if you get birds, you have to start cooking with different uh, things. Like you can't use nonstick pans and all this kind of stuff because it kills them really fast. Um, so I need to like for sure make sure that it's okay. And most things don't have like a, is this okay for birds or not section on their like product information. Um, so it's not necessarily the easiest thing to figure out, but I am working on it. I'm working on it. I think Dan's gonna have to weigh, on in this, weigh in on this next one from Aaron S. Had to get a second pack of underwear because now I feel uncomfortable in anything else. Nice. Yeah, relatable. Um, question. I like to buy vinyl copies of my favorite albums. Do either of you all own any music anymore? Yes, of course. Uh, I've got vinyl. Um, I'm of the generation where we kept highly curated MP3 uh, folders uh, to, to <laughs> copy onto your MP3 player. So that's kind of like my generation's vinyl. Uh, but I really like vinyl. I think it's fun. Um, I, I don't like it because it necessarily sounds better. I'm not going to piss anybody off by saying what I just did. Oh, crap. Um, <laughs> a lot of people here at the office collect it, too. The covers are great. The, the art is great. Uh, I don't like buying music that I've heard before. I will buy random single or limited run pressings of stuff I've never heard that's only available on vinyl. Um, and most of it's bad. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but it's awesome. It's like a, a, a grab bag, right? It's a kinder surprise. Yeah, it's a kinder surprise of terrible, terrible music. Okay. I have some vinyl, but most of my vinyl I have purchased for like collection reasons. Like I have the Bastion soundtrack. A lot of them are gaming soundtracks. I think it's stupid. So there you go. There's the entire spectrum. Um, the day that I have... I, I, I don't think it's like cool or and it's smart. ironic because I totally have space to store like records 
but I just can't think of anything less valuable that I could possibly put in that space. Not gonna lie, I got them and I used to play them because I used to do this thing where like I would do house chores during yeah. one record and then be yeah, like, okay. all right, I did that amount of time. Uh, since I used to do that, they have definitely never been played and they very likely like never will be again. Don't They're just tell so inconvenient at this point. Don't tell anyone, but I kind of agree with Linus. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I like, for what some people will spend on their vinyl collection, I have my entire house wired up with <laughs> Wi-Fi enabled smart speakers so yeah. that I can yeah. stream anything from any device in my house. My kids can into any room or any combination of rooms. And I'm sitting here going like, I, I, so. that's how you do it ironically again i actually own a turntable but only because youtube sent it out as like a like trendy youtuber gift and i just it's like branded after the channel and youtube and stuff so and now i'm you like gotta keep it yeah now now i just have this thing. <laughs> well at least you'll have something to play the ldt christmas album vinyl release on <laughs> that will not exist um uh, yeah linus was always curious what your go-to badminton kit is what like oh. rackets shoes strings tension everything okay so compared to um Hold on, archive. Cool. Uh, compared to, I hmm, how do I put this? So bad. The badminton community is either kind of northern European for the most part, or skews heavily Asian, especially Southeast Asian. So the the countries where badminton is huge, places like Malaysia, Thailand, um, Japan, China, uh, India, like badminton is enormous in those areas. And then Denmark of all places is like world-class. Um, like they have the number one men's singles player right now, Victor Axelson. Um, so anyway, my problem is that a lot of badminton equipment tends to be designed more for an Asian audience. So my shoes, for example, are, uh, yes, I have to get the whatever, whatever the wide version of the, I think it's like the 65 something W shoe or something like that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a something. It's a Yonex SHB 65 W or something like that. It's discontinued, but I still wear it because I bought like six of them uh, because they discontinued their wide model for a while. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. Uh, they discontinued their wide model in, in one generation. I was like, you guys don't have a wide shoe anymore. This is ridiculous. And then when they brought it back, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to stock up on them so that I never have to worry about that again. And I've actually gone through like four of them already. So I'm down to, I'm down to two more. And then I actually just switched rackets. Uh, I just switched to the Nano Flare 700 uh, for you. The 5U is super cool which uh, it's like super, super light. And I like that about it. But the um, this one is not Nano as... Nano Flare 700, what a name. Yeah, this is not as fragile. Yeah, so, so there you go. And I'm I'm partial to hang you uh, tournament number one shuttlecocks. There you go. <laughs> uh, bu 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 bu. When deciding whether to make a new video and especially a new video that is different from existing series, do you have... Oh. Oh, I, sorry, I left something out. I use BG80 strings, but I might need to switch because they're really um, delicate and I keep breaking them because I miss it at the top of my racket a lot because I'm dumb and I use too much arm and not enough wrist. There you go. Basically, Way more you, detail than most people need. Do you trust your experience or instinct when, when deciding to jump into like a new category, a new type of video that you haven't made before? It's got to be both. I mean, they're inseparable for me. So much of my instinct or sorry, is... No, no, compared to like having a scoring system. A scoring system? Yeah, systematic <laughs> score. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, it's it's experience and instinct. Um, obviously, you know, we, we will discuss things. I don't just make unilateral decisions, but we are... Man, when it comes to creativity, you can't you can't just score things. Yeah. Like you can rank them. You could go, okay, here's three ideas. Good, better, best, right? Uh, but good, better, best. But I I don't think you can just quantify that stuff. There also might be a worth in making a certain video that is not super tangible. 
Mm, yeah, we make videos regularly that we know are not necessarily going to perform the best or be the, the lowest cost for the highest return in terms of views or sponsorship dollars or whatever else. Uh, but, you know, for us, it's, it's also, it's a long game, right? So we might invest a ton of time and money in having labs test some product that we know is going to perform mediocre at best as a video when I could just react to crazy gaming setups and sit in front of a camera for like 50 minutes and, and bang out a video that'll do twice as many views. But the reason we do that is because you guys wouldn't care about me reacting to computers unless we were also uh, a reliable, valuable source of information about these products that you might actually buy as opposed to the ones that you just like looking at funny videos about. Uh, Joseph asks, first time merch message. I was just curious if there's any companies, either tech or not, that you would like to see fail. <laughs> Is there anyone that you just think the world would be better off there's without? There's a lot. Okay. There's tons. Okay. Amazon. Really? Fail. Walmart. Okay. Uh, name other things that are similar to that. Gigantic big box stores. Okay, hold on a second. What about someone like a Google? Would you rather see them fail? No. I think no. And Amazon, when I'm saying Amazon, I'm saying what I think most people, maybe not in this audience, but what I think most people would imagine when they think of Amazon, which is like Amazon.com. Not necessarily some of the other things that they do. Interesting. Okay, sure. Like AWS. I'm, I'm, I, it, AWS is not funny. in a monopolistic position exactly. at this time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. There are competitors. There are competitors that are legit and there are competitors that are thriving. So it's like, okay, that's right. But I don't, Amazon.com can, can die fire. All right. Yeah. Man, I'm having a hard time. Th like Walmart can die in a fire. I don't need them to, I don't need them to fail. I just need them to not be as dominant. Um, and like, I'm, I'm generally just pro competition. This, this is like the, the conversation we're having earlier about fines. My reason for wanting these ones to fail is because of the damage that they've done to other groups. Oh, I see. So I want them to actually fail. There are other things where it's like, okay, you're winning a little bit too hard, but you're not like horrifically abusing your low level employees. So, you know, maybe you could do not as well. That would be great. Right. But I want those ones to fail personally. Yeah. Uh, okay, we've got just a couple more. Uh, Jared asks, what do you think about Tesla's not being very very friendly in regards to owner repair? Do you think electric vehicles are going to need to be worked on by manufacturers and dealers? I mean, we're generally pro right to repair across the board. Um, and and no, I'm, I'm not a big fan of a lot of Tesla's way of doing business. I mean... Um, as, as a member of the media in particular, and as someone who values open and honest communication, um, Tesla crossed a huge red line for me when they dissolved their PR department and basically decided they were just not going to answer questions about anything that was inconvenient for them. That's not actually cool. That's not being like a Chad or whatever. That's that's just deciding, making a conscious decision to not be accountable. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that a lot of what Tesla does is is very cool. I don't want them to fail. I, you know, I, overall, I, I, I think they they are a force for good in the car market. Uh, more competition is is generally more better from my point of view, but I'm I'm not a fan. Um, I haven't seen the Final Mouse Centerpiece keyboard, Anonymous. Uh, Final Mouse Centerpiece. All right, fine. We'll do this. We'll do this live. Final Mouse Centerpiece. Here we go. A $350 keyboard. Good gravy. <laughs> what? Okay. Where's the keyboard? Yeah, where's the 
keycaps. Am I missing something here? Wait, that was that's the whole thing? The Buy video. from Final Mouse. Okay, now hold on just a gosh darn minute here. Get ready for the impossible. It will be impossible to type on this Shut because it has up. no keycap. Um, how do I... That's This is it? This is the whole page? Uh, do you have loud. to click get ready for the impossible? No. Scroll, probably. No, I can't scroll. What is it called, sorry? Uh, Final Mouse Centerpiece Keyboard. There's Interactive Display Keyboard. Okay, so here, hold on, we found a video. Official reveal. Oh my goodness, it's six minutes long. Um, oh, I see. It has an actual display under it. Is it under it? Oh, cool. Yeah, it or seems like it. Or are the like keys it. displays? No, I think it's under it. Because you would see the Switch hardware, wouldn't you? Uh, you do. Yeah, that's the Switch hardware right there. I mean, it's surprisingly see-through. That's pretty cool. Oh wow, they are there are keycaps. They're just very clear. Okay, that's pretty neat. I don't think it's the kind of thing that I would spend real actual dollar redos on. Yeah, but me either. Um, definitely cool. I, I don't actually. I'm sure like someone them. will like that. I'm sure someone's gonna have like a uh, a tour walkthrough that has like a really cool setup with that. That's gonna look super sick. Yeah, I I Not dim really my keyboard yeah. to the lowest level because I don't need the glare, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> okay, finally, Linus and Luke, how do you intend to differentiate? Uh, oh, moo. Okay, how do you intend to differentiate LTT Labs in regards to testing when compared to other review sites such as ratings? That's a great question. Um, the biggest way that we plan to differentiate is through breadth and depth, right? Like that's what it really comes down to is we want to test more categories, uh, particularly more IT categories. I mean, I don't think pretty much anyone like ratings is really doing a great job of database-like content for products like power supplies. Um, I think that it's underserved. And so we would, we would like to, we'd like to step in there. And I, fully intend to continue investing in the lab until we are providing the most possible depth in our in our coverage. So how are we going to differentiate? I mean we're gonna compete. We're gonna compete hard, right? Like we want we want to we want to be a leader. We don't wanna we don't want to be a follower in the space. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye! Weird, that feels short now, isn't it? How long was that show? Three hours and 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, that... It flew by. Yep. What a world. What a thing. Oh, the show is brought to you by Goliath Technologies, Squarespace, and, oh, balls, what was the last one? It was something good, I'm sure. FreshBooks, there we go. That makes sense.